Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I am always trying to expand my library here at home, and I found two more very short books that are an easy read, and I'd like to recommend them to you. First of all, this book is entitled Things I Love About My Country by Jane Fonda, Cindy Sheehan, and M Michelle Obama, illustrated by Michael Moore and the foreword by George Soros. And secondarily, another book I would suggest, very short book, very short book, it's entitled My Country. Complete Knowledge of Military Strategy by Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch, here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I love that lady and her singing, Kate Smith, late great Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning, everybody. I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations working and serving you. And uh, don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and, of course, Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Yep, get on the route service today. Call them. Get your garbage out of there. Seven three four six nine six nine. Uh, it's a team effort on this program, as I have stated many, many times in the past. And right here at the studio, my lovely wife, Deanne, and over at the main studios, engineer extraordinaire, quarterback of the team, Gina Jameson, good morning. Good morning, Sunshine. How are you? Um, good, as a matter of fact, this morning. And uh, we've got so many things to talk about. And yeah. right after we do the the pledge and then the weather, I'm going to come back not only with a tip of the coffee cup, but also a special birthday. Oh, okay. Oh, and by the way, I have a private message uh, for, remember the lady that, uh, oh, it's been two, three weeks ago, won some steak knives, Zeb at the Ranch yeah. steak knives? Tori Peterson. And mm -hmm. I did she ever call and leave her number and address so that we can get a hold of her? She, I think I gave her your guys' phone number. Oh, well, I've never heard from her. So if anybody out there knows Tori, or if Tori's listening, just give us a call yes. uh, on my cell phone at 312-2976. Okay. Okay, let's have the pledge. We've got uh, Miss Abigail on for the pledge, and Michael Rogers on for the weather. Abby's on for the pledge. Good morning, Miss Abigail. How are you today? Good. All right, well, give us the pledge, please. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know, it's such a treat to have you call in. God bless you and your family. Thanks, Abby. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much. What a nice girl right there. Oh, my goodness sakes, it's time for a little weather update. Let's see if we're going to have uh, clear skies, warmer temperatures. Here's MichaelRogersWeather.com. Good morning, everybody. Zeb, I need some extra time because you're going to run to a same event you had uh, yesterday, so I need to alert people on that right now. Good morning, everybody. Partly cloudy for today. 56 on the high. The winds are going to be not bad up at the south, southwest at 5 miles an hour. More the same for this evening. Overnight lows will be on the cool side. 36 of the overnight low. Now, for tomorrow, you're going to go through what you went through yesterday. And you've got a wind event coming again. This is a strong storm. It's not a winter storm. It's not a summer storm. It's not a spring storm. It is a strong storm with the brunt of the precipitation to our north. 
and the front extending all the way down into northern Nevada. What does that mean for you in plain English? That thing is packing some winds. You're looking for wind gusts tomorrow, 20 to 30 sustained, possibly gusting to 40. And that sounds really good on a forecast, but here's a situation that I want to push over to everyone. In the Magic Valley of South Central Idaho, in the Snake River Plains, there's not a lot of mountains in this area. So when the winds really do kick up, there's nothing blocking them. So to tell me 20 to 30 gusting to 40, okay, yeah, I can buy that one. But I'm not really going to buy that stock. You could see wind events tomorrow just like you saw yesterday. Mm. So please be advised. This is what's going to happen for the forecast going into tomorrow. I will not see you after tomorrow. I won't see you to Monday. Once you get through the weekend, you got a nice weekend all the way across the board. Other than that, enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. It is the only weather you've got. You know, see, that's why I like Michael Rogers' weather. Very comprehensive, very, very easy to understand. God bless him. MichaelRogersWeather.com right here on Zeb at the Ranch. Thanks, Michael, and really do appreciate it. Um, we also want to say appreciations to Ramsey Heating and Electric. Hello, Keith. Hello, everybody over at Ramsey Heating and Electric. And they bought a whole lot, I mean a bunch, of incandescent light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And the government, you know, they've got these silly, stupid regulations about how incandescent light bulbs are going to be a thing of the past. Well, not in my house. I bought a box of the uh, incandescents. You can, too, store up on them. 40, 60, 75, or 100 watt. They've got them for you, Ramsey. Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they always provide warm winters and cool summers at Ramsey Heating and Electric. By the way, uh, Gina, right there, if you're by the microphone, we have a very special birthday boy that has been on my program many, many times, and he's always, along with his lovely wife, been so supportive of our lunch bunch. And I'd like to extend a very, very happy birthday to Pastor Alex Lissau. Thank you very much, and happy birthday. And I hope you have a wonderful day. So there you go. Happy birthday. And a tip of the coffee cup this morning goes to Dr. Adrian Arp in Twin Falls, Senator Dean Cameron over in Rupert, and Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Ford. Wonderful lunch bunch right there. Thank you very much. And uh, from Zeb at the Ranch to you and yours, God bless you. Hey, Valley Wide Home and Ranch, uh, Monday was Chick Day. Here a Chick, there a Chick, everywhere a Chick Chick. And believe me, they had a whole bunch of stuff in there for all your chickens. Uh, flock raisers, start grow, all the equipment you needed. Everything is right there at Valley Wide Home and Ranch. I mean everything. And they've got all kinds of boots. I mean the area boots. I love those area boots. They're really a good boot. Men's, women, and kid sizes. Men's boots, D-width and wide widths available. Montana. Of silversmith's jewelry, everything, and for the 4 H'ers, don't forget, get your livestock project started off right with the feed from Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You stop in and see those great folks today. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Folks, I'll tell you what, um, every day on this program, I ask and encourage your phone calls because I want to hear your opinion. That's what this show is all about, give and take. I'll say something, maybe you don't agree or maybe you do agree. That's the give and take. Call me up, let me know. But I honestly am, am really shocked that this story has stayed in the news as the top news story for the last 11 days. And you know, rightfully so. Um, I, I think it was yesterday I equated it, uh, Chris Hondo called in and I said, you know, this is uh, a story of the Malaysian jet 370, flight 370, that almost has a same kind of a philosophy and theory behind it like the uh, the problems that they had over in uh, uh, Egypt as far as uh, the death of four Americans that uh, nobody knows what happened to them well now here's a plane with uh, 250 people rounding it off nobody knows where the jet went Nobody knows what happened to the people on board. Nobody knows the why and the gist of all the story. Okay? Now, it changes. It's changing every single day, almost every single hour. And, you know, the likes of Bill O'Reilly the other night, and it really offended me. Uh, I consider myself to be a journalist and really study the news and try to promote the news to you in a fashion that it's only factual. 
Well, this story is based upon mystery and speculation. But for Bill O'Reilly to come out and say the other night, and I really do hammer him on this, uh, well, there's too much speculation, the plane's down in the Indian Ocean. That's not true, because nobody knows. And here are some of the facts this morning that have changed that you, the audience, should know about. Uh, number one, the pilot and co-pilot, when they made their final send-off, all right, good night. Now they have found out that when they said that, the plane had already altered course and taken a sharp left turn 10 to 12 minutes before they said, all right, good night. And they were on a westerly course. Now, the question is, why didn't ground control say to the pilot and co-pilot, what in the heck are you doing up there? You're completely off course. Nobody said a word. Now, this was just found out yesterday. And it was through American Ingenuity and detective ship, if you will. I don't even know if that's a word, but I just made it one. That we found this out. Malaysia has been absolutely pathetic in giving out information that is bona fide and solidified as truthful. But ask yourself this question. You're on a jetliner, and you're headed to Salt Lake City, or say Salt Lake City back to Oklahoma City, east direction. And then all of a sudden the plane turns right, severe hard right turn. You are going south. Okay? Why wouldn't ground control get back on there and say, uh, flight number 370, you have diverted off course. Why are you now in a westerly direction? Nobody said anything. So that happened 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes before they said, all right, good night. And here's something else that should have been found out a long time ago, and I really welcome your calls on this. The pilot had a home training device, his own unique little uh, in-the-corner type uh, rendition of what a cockpit would look like on a 777. He built it, put a lot of time into it. Now they're finding out that some of what he had been practicing on had been deleted from the computers. I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, well, that's not that big a deal. It is. Because as of now on this 11th day, nobody knows where that jet is. Nobody knows what happened to the crew. And nobody has a theory that is better than anyone else's theory. I'm going to do some commercials, and I want to come back, and I want to talk about retired Air Force General Thomas McInerney, a man that has been on my program numerous times. And um, I want to talk about how his theory and my theory, I gave my theory on this way back over a week ago on Tuesday. I said I had a feeling that some very bad people took control of the jet and possibly flew it north and it landed in an airport, and it's going to be used possibly as a weapon of mass destruction against either the United States or Israel. They'll repaint the plane. I said that. It's on tape. It took place over a week ago on Tuesday. I said that. Thomas McInerney, Air Force General, is agreeing and expanding on that theory. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Do not forget our friends at Musser Brothers. They're going to have a ripping good auction tomorrow. And this is going to be an excellent farm auction. It's the Don Taylor Farms auction tomorrow, Thursday, March 20th at 1030 a.m., 1200 north, 200 east of Rupert. All the best of tractors and big, big balers, swathers and rakes, grain equipment, loaders and backhoes, semi-tractors, sprayers, beat equipment, ground working equipment, all there at this great farm sale. Live simulcast bidding available. And uh, Musser Brothers Auctions and Real Estate going to be running the sale. Randy Musser, good old boy, 733 8700 Don Taylor Farms auction tomorrow Thursday at 10:30 a.m. Rupert, you better be there. It's going to be a dandy. Also, our thanks go out again to Denny's Restaurant. And uh, by the way, if you're unaware of it, our next lunch bunch will be on the 27th, Thursday, the 27th of this month. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Thomas and the rest of the crew, Terry, they just have absolutely bent over backwards to be so hospitable to us. And we've got a great room. We've got a great bunch. Of 
of people coming down there were averaging pretty close to 65 and 70 every time. Wow. And the food is great. Service just couldn't be any better. You're going to love it at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, whenever. Walk in and just enjoy the great food at Denny's Restaurant in Burley. Really nice people. Calls are welcome and appreciated. Don't be standoffish. Give us a jingle. Let us know your thoughts. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Now, a friend of mine, uh, Jimmy Weinstein, he's been on my program, and he writes for the Daily Caller, did an interview and a short synopsis with retired Air Force General Thomas McInery on his theory regarding the Malaysian Airlines flight. I am going to pick out and choose some of the story, but giving you the uh, first headline paragraph, retired Air Force General Thomas McInerney isn't backing away from his thriller novel-like suggestion that the missing Malaysian Airlines flight could very well be landed in Pakistan, and he says his theory is based on more than mere conjecture. And the other night on Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity had Thomas McInerney on the program, and uh, he really put the general on the spot, and I think with good reason, and he said this, General, I've known you a long time. I know you too well to know that you're not just making this up. This is not something you've concocted. You've spoken to a number of people, am I correct? And McInerney responded and said, yes, but that's all I want to say. And then McInerney pointed out that the uh, United States and Israeli militaries have acted differently in the last few recent days to suggest that much more is known about the missing flight than has so far been revealed. And here is his quote. Caller, I'm going to be right with you. Stand by. First of all, let me say, when the United States Navy quits their search, their ship search, they must know something in the Indian Ocean. When the Israeli Defense Forces, when they increase their air defense alert, they must know something. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Do you want to know my theory on that flight? I think your theory is as good as anyone else's right now. I never think it left the ground. No. Um, you know, I'm not disputing your, your theory on that, but uh, there's there's uh, visual contact uh, with many, many people, family members and everything, uh, at the airport that were saying goodbye and everything. The plane did leave the Malaysian airport. There's no question about that. They send up a dummy plane. And they took that one and hid it, and the dummy plane has gone someplace else and landed. That's why they can't find it. Well, Dal, you know, to me, uh, for me, to sit here and denigrate anything that you say, that would be very hypocritical, because right now, as I said, your theory is as good as anybody else's theory. And you know, the problem we have with a story like this, we've never had a story like this. And the conjecture and the speculation and everything else, uh, I think has been good. And I'll tell you why, Dial, and I think you'll agree with me, is that all the questions and all the conjecture and all the speculation has made the detective work, I think, look at all angles, and I think that's uncovered some facts that we needed to know. Well, I just got to thinking about it, and that's, uh, that's my theory. All right. Well, again, I cannot dispute it because my theory is no better than yours because nobody knows. My better half wants to speak at you a minute. Oh, my goodness. Am I in trouble again? <laughs> no, I just want to to let you know how brave I think Mama Obama is to take off now and go to China. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> Uh, you know my thoughts on uh, Michelle Obama and her entourage going to China for nothing more than a trip. Uh, basically, it's not anything for any political stature or anything to help America. I am very offended that the taxpayers may well have been on the hook now for over a million dollar trip for her and her mother and the girls to just enjoy the Great Wall of China. That offends me. Too, too bad she can't go down. Anyway. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that, Helen. Thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs> Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Uh, Thomas McInerney is a very respected retired Air Force general, and he said this, My concern is, 
if this airplane could be used as a bearer of a weapon of mass destruction or even conventional munitions that could attack an aircraft carrier, the Israelis or other allies, American forces for instance, we have to be very alert until we know exactly where this plane is. I couldn't agree more. Call her quickly. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi, Zeb. Everybody's got the smoke and mirrors, including yourself. You're an extension of the main media to get away from the real problem. If they're worried about this jet going to be a bomb, it's got some pinging transponder on it that they can see coming in. Now, the, the focus that the United States, me and you, should be on is jobs in America. So my tax dollars don't go to the lazy bum that's on welfare for 25 years and gets more money than me and I have to work. The focus of everybody in the United States, you, me, and everybody else, except for the lazy bums, should be get the jobs back to America and get the welfare bums working so my tax dollars go to something that's actually useful, maybe my ass pocket, and 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 get them off of welfare. Okay, now I've let you uh, I've let you have your rant. That should be the focus. I let you have your rant. Now you're going to listen to me respectfully. I never interrupted you. Hey. Now you're going to listen to Go me. Number one, uh, I respect your attitude on the jobs because it is a very important factor that's been uh, put on the back burner here in the United States. But don't you dare. Don't you dare belittle the passing of 250 people, some of which were American citizens, and their whereabouts. Wait a minute, I didn't interrupt you, and I do not want you to interrupt me. I said that we can never belittle the fact that 250 people have disappeared from the face of the earth. The families need closure. We need to know what happened and why it happened so that all defense units, whether it's Israel, whether it's the United States or wherever, can be on the alert and make sure that this is not going to be used for attack. For you okay. to belittle... Wait a minute, you did it again. Okay. For you to belittle the situation of how serious this story is, I think is a little bit more than ambiguous, quite frankly. Okay, we all know the Big Brother. We all know how many satellites are up in space. We all know that they could read your license plate to and fro work, and they can track you and me day in and day out, dark or night. Don't you think the government, their government, our government, can go back or has tracked it real time or go back and say this jet took off from here and they can see it real time visually now you're making an assumption wait a minute you asked a question i'm going to answer it and you're not going to interrupt you're making an assumption that the countries involved with the tracking and the radar would give the information there could have been a very clandestine plot to let this plane go to an airport a secretive airport and have a changeover all of the theories are still on the table, whether the plane went down in the Indian Ocean, whether the plane went to a foreign country, whether it's going to be used as a tactical device of weapons of mass destruction against somebody. But for you to come on the program and diminish the fact that it's not important, I'm offended by that. Now, hold on. When I was in Iraq, I could get five minutes back. I could see real-time data in my Humvee when we were going to do a raid. I could see five minutes back real-time data on top of me. Don't you think that the Big Brother has the same capability, if not better, than the, what they were delivering to me? You keep referring to the Big Brother as if it was the United States that is at... No, 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 no. no wait a minute. Now, you did it again. Russia's got the same. Russia's got the same technology. We've got the technology. It's, it, it is... It is a, a real-time satellite visual view, whether it be infrared or the color spectrum. Well, then my suggestion to you, sir, and I've got a hard break here at the bottom of the hour. I'd love to continue this harangue with you, but I can't. My suggestion to you is call Washington, D.C. immediately and tell them that you have all the answers. Buy your ticket, go to Salt Lake, get a direct flight, and go back and solve this case. But do not come on my program and diminish the fact that 250 people have died, and that's not worth worthwhile checking on and finding out. Those families deserve closure. We deserve to find out on the defense mechanism as to whether or not that plane is going to be used against somebody. So don't diminish it by saying the jobs report. You're worried about that. I've, I'm offended the by that. The defense mechanism I agree on. 
All right, you go back to Washington and call me from Washington while you're sitting in the Secretary of Defense's office, Hagel, and let me know. Put Chucky on the phone with you and let me know that you solved the problem. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your call. I, I absolutely will not stand for the downplaying of the loss of human life. Benghazi, still no answers on why four people, four Americans died. 250 people die in a plain mystery, and I won't let it be belittled. Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn. Don't forget, they've got everything you need. The wheel lines really got tangled up by pretzels the other day. And uh, Jim said, hey, listen, they've got all the parts needed to put them back together again. Humpty Dumpty wheel lines. They've got the 3 8 uh, wheel line bolts, uh, grade 2. They've got all the, uh, the birdies ready to go. They've got everything waiting for you. All you have to do is call Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, 438-877. Please. Oh, oh, by the way, he's got some trees over there, too. He's got some pine trees he'd like you to come over. They're $50 a piece. And uh, dig them up, replant them. Beautiful pine trees. Travel Loop Supply waiting to serve you at 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, 438-8730. They deliver the goods. Uh, right now, we're going to go to the Capital Press Ag Minute. Brought to you by Lennox Heating and Electric. <laughs> Lennox Heating and Electric. Lennox Home Comfort Systems and through Ramsey Heating and Electric at 26 at Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459. And we'll have more right after this. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. The dairy group that authored legislation that makes it a crime to secretly film or interfere with agricultural operations in Idaho is confident it will withstand a pending federal lawsuit. A coalition of animal rights, civil liberties, Food Safety, and other groups filed a federal lawsuit March 17th that seeks to overturn Idaho's Ag Security Act, which was signed into law February 28th by Governor Butch Otter. The legislation makes it a crime for someone to gain employment in an Idaho agricultural operation through deception with the intent to cause economic harm and other damage to the operation. For the Capital Press Ag Minute, this is Brandon Tenner. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Our thanks go to Lennox Home Comfort Systems at Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they can offer rebates on Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459. They can give you all the answers. Call them today. You know, i got to say this. Uh, I respect the man for calling and uh, voicing his opinion. But here's one thing that I want everybody to remember and think about. In this day and age where we get so calloused, and I believe we are very calloused, four Americans die in Benghazi, our American troops coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's kind of like, who cares? And then 250 people go down in a jetliner, and we don't know anything as to what happened to them. The grieving families, some of which live here in the United States, no closure. Are we that calloused as a nation? Are we that calloused as humanity that we can't put forth our feelings of absolute help and care to others? and worry about how they're doing? Are we that calloused that you would call up on a radio program and say, I've had enough worrying about this and everything else, and I want to talk about the jobs. Are we that calloused that we don't care about humanity anymore? Gina, you go ahead. You worked for me, but I'll guarantee you I respect your opinion. Am I wrong? Are we that callous that we can't show loving and caring? Um, I think if you want my honest opinion, uh, yeah, our society has become that callous. Where we, are, it, it, society in general, doesn't matter what country you're in, it, it's all about me, myself, and I. That's this day and age. Yeah, but I mean to call okay. up and and again, I'm 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 giving him a salute for having the nerve to yeah. do it. But on the other hand, to call up and basically say, well, that that's tough. It's over with. It's been 11 days. Who cares about 250 people? I can't be that way. No, and I hope that you wouldn't be that way. There are people out there that, you know, do care. You and I both care. How would you feel? Let me ask you a question. How would you feel as a listener to this program?
and you happen to be a relative of one of those missing people on that jetliner. Mm -hmm. and you're fraught with despair and worry about what happened to them and no closure, and you're listening to the program, and somebody calls in and says, ah, enough about that plane, let's talk about jobs in America. And then the host said, oh, yeah, jobs are more important. What would you feel? Uh, I, uh, I, my feelings would be greatly hurt, honestly. I would feel sad. I would be like, no, I want to talk about this. I want, to, I want more news. I want... You know, because if if you're a family member of somebody that was on that plane, this is all consuming for you. That's exactly and right. All consuming. It's all consuming, but it should be all consuming for humanity. Okay. You know, the caring. I don't care if they're Asian. I don't care if they're from Switzerland. I don't care if they're from Australia. I don't care where they're from. They're people. They're human beings that all of a sudden have disappeared. Mm -hmm. And take 250 people, multiply that by their immediate family, all their other family members, all their friends, and we're talking about literally thousands and thousands of people that have been affected by this plane going down. Well, and, and the one thing that gets me is, okay, number one, these people that were on the plane, at least the passengers, they were all innocent. Uh, there were children on that That's plane. exactly the right. I and agree. so, you know, if, if from my perspective as a mom, I mean, come on. Moms, dads, grandparents, that could have been ha your grandchildren. Have we got to the point where all of a sudden a news story becomes cumbersome and people become so uh, sick and tired of hearing about it that we just wipe the slate clean? Oh, well, they're dead, they're gone, who cares? Have we got to that point in our society? Yeah, it, we have. It's, it's the 30 second time span. You have 30 seconds. I mean, uh, the people's attention span and their interest has, as far as continuing to follow up on a story, it has greatly diminished over the years. Uh, I'm uh, telling you, this this just. It's, it is sad, but, it's, you know, honestly, you're asking my opinion, yes. I, I did ask opinion. for it, but I'll tell you something. If we've reached that level of inhumanity, of not caring about others and worrying about mm -hmm. others and wondering why, you know the why. The why is the major question with yeah. me, because I've been so involved in all of these stories that we put forth on the air, and I also have been in a plane crash, uh, contrary to what maybe that other gentleman has not, and they didn't find me for three days, quite frankly, and I'm very concerned about these people, and I will continue to be concerned, okay? That's the way it's going to be. Gina, thank you very much. You're welcome. Penetron Soil Conditioner by Maisie has a 20-year proven record of increasing yield and quality of all Idaho crops with 30 interactive components, speeding germination, reduced encrusting, I want to say that again, reducing crusting, improved stand, stimulates root growth and microbial activity, and builds soil structure too. And the low-cost Penetron saves irrigation water. The water savings alone will pay for the cost of the product. Absolutely. You can increase your crop's performance with a proven soil conditioner, Penetron by Maisie. Contact your fertilizer dealer and your crop advisor today to obtain Penetron soil conditioner. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436 2244 927 I want to remind you real quick that the 42nd Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale is going to take place April 10th through the 13th. Four, four big days of activity up at Salmon at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds with my buddy Fred Snook and his crew. Wow! This is going to be fantastic. Thursday, they're going to have the Idaho Outfitters and Guides Rendezvous, and then, of course, they're going to have the Mule Sale Cal Calcutta. Friday the 11th, they're going to have training clinics. They're going to have mule packing competition. Then the big mule sale at 6.30 on Friday. Saturday, of course, they're going to have Cowboy Church, and they're going to have a rope horse performance. And then at 1 p.m., the 42nd annual horse sale. And then Sunday the 13th, big team roping at 9 a.m. Wow! All this and more. 42nd annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds in Salmon. Fred Snook is the man. They're going to have a great event. All right, calls are welcome. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Uh, we'll take this call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Talk to me, caller. Good morning. Caller, good morning. You are on the air. Speak to me. I'm speaking to you. All right. I, I couldn't hear a word. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. 
Well, I'm speaking to you that our schools are no different than the people around us. I recently bought a pair, a new pair of uh, my grandson, some uh, brand new clothing, and they disappear in the school, and to this day we haven't found them. And uh, it seems to be like this attitude in schools is really need to be taken care of. I mean, come on. <clears throat> I mean, when it happens, if anything, that should be as much concern when you lose your stuff. Yeah. I mean, a 50 pair of jeans is no laughing matter. No. That pair on a fixed income like I am. I, I appreciate your concern on clothing that is taken, stolen, or lost at the schools, and uh, there really shouldn't be. I don't be... know anything. I knew the, from everybody, and I said, my word. And it hasn't been fun yet. And surely, I mean, come on, there's a 400 kids there. And nobody knows anything. All right, well, i tell you what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to turn the tables a little bit here, and I'm going to ask you to respectfully go back to the opinions that we were sharing about another topic. You have called in many times, and you've also given us good opinions. Now, I'm going to ask you, are you concerned after day 11 that this jet with 250 people on board is still a major mystery? Stay on track here for a minute and give me your opinion on that story. I'm very concerned, and I believe that uh, I believe that the, it's a it's a part of a bigger plot than we imagine, you know. And I believe that it has to in that area of the country is getting to be very dangerous for us America to go there. I mean, it's getting to be just as dangerous to go to the south of the border. <laughs> you know, and I respect your attitude and opinion on that because I've got some dear friends that are going to be taking a trip overseas in the next couple of days, and uh, their welfare and their well-being is very, very prominent, and we pray for their we safe return. Be, we have to be very careful around parts of the country, and we have to uh, realize that not everywhere are we welcome. That's right. Sir, I appreciate your call. I, I do appreciate... So they don't have the same... Uh, what do you call policies for the safety of anybody? I agree with you. There are two big countries that really are just, <laughs> what can I say about it? I mean, uh, they're uh, just up there. I appreciate your call this morning. A lot of people are disappearing. I appreciate your call, and in regard to the clothing issue, uh, I think that schools and teachers and principals and school boards, everybody should be cognizant that maybe they may uh, maybe uh, ought to make a directive about uh, everybody being more conscious about where other people's property is. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I got another call waiting. Thank you very much. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hello, Hello? caller. Speak to me. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm driving down from my little falls listening to your program. And when you started talking about everybody being uh, not concerned about these guys in the plane, it just made me think about Benghazi and what our Secretary of State had to say. What difference does it make now? Yeah. Well, it just makes my blood boil when I hear stuff like that, and people just can't seem to understand that it does make a difference. You know, I really respect you for calling in on this subject because I was so mad when that caller said basically uh, let's let that story go and let's go and talk about American jobs. The callousness and the forgetfulness of human beings and their worth to society, if we've got that callous, we've got some real problems. Well, you know, I was thinking also of the terror that those guys must have felt on that plane, whether it crashed or whether it's hijacked or whatever it is. And, you know, uh, you've got to have some human compassion for that. I mean, it's a, you know, I can just can't imagine how much uh, terror there was on that plane. Or maybe still is with the people that are on the ground. Maybe they're on the ground somewhere. I don't know. You know, sir, I appreciate your viewpoints, and that's the whole thing right now. My theory, General McInerney's theory, theory, your theory, everybody's theory is still a theory because it's a huge mystery, but it's got to be solved. And I do appreciate your call. God bless you, and call again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, sir. See, I, you know, this is what I'm worried about. This is what I'm worried about, and I talked to Deanne about this last night. We, we can't become callous so that we sit in front of a television set and say, oh, I've heard enough of this story. I'm sick of this story. We cannot get that calloused. Human lives have been taken, possibly. We don't know. 
but we need to find out. And their families and their friends and all their mutual interests. We can't become that callous that nobody cares. This is a story that I'm going to stay on, and I might forewarn you, I'm not going to leave the premise of this story on this show at any time in the future until it's solved. So if you don't like it, turn on a business report and listen to a jobs report if that's your interest. People, to me, are more important. Let's have a weather forecast right now with Michael Rogers Weather, brought to you by Butte Irrigation, two locations, 116 South, 600 West of Paul, and also north of Kimberly at Red Cap Corner, brand new location serving you, Butte Irrigation. They've got all your irrigation needs. Don't forget, uh, with stores in Kimberly and on Kimberly Road right there in Paul, they've got everything you need, all your spring parts needs. They've got all the brands of wheel lines, hand lines, main lines, pivots, and pumps. They can help get you wet, Butte Irrigation and now Michael Rogers weather update. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. You are listening to the biggest weather whiner this side of the Mississippi River. You better believe it. Hey, I haven't been to Idaho in quite a while. I come up from Nevada. You know what's cold here? And to get serious, uh, it's going to be partly cloudy for today and also for tonight. Same temperature as was yesterday. In mid to upper 50s, the uh, overnight lows will be in the mid to upper 30s. Now, we're going to have another wind event for tomorrow. I'm telling you ahead of time now. Wind gusts 25 to 35, gusting to 40 for most of the day tomorrow. You can take that information, and after what you went through day before yesterday, you now know what you need to go through. So, enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. The only way you got. All right, Michael, thank you. Good weather forecast and keeps us up to date as to what is dangerous out there. Brought to you by Butte Irrigation in Paul and Kimberly. As I said, they will get you wet. They've got all your irrigation needs. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, uh, uh, again, as you've said so many times, as we slip away from the principles of, of Christianity, we start to suffer the consequences, and uh, that's exactly where we sit. And when our primary, uh, uh, you know, principles of life are neglected, and that is to care about our fellow man as human beings, one another, not with somebody forcing us to do so from the government, that is what gives us our cohesive growth you know we can see when we lose that when we realize that when christ when god created human beings he said you know lose yourself in service to others and if you don't you will suffer the consequences if you truly don't care about your fellow man you know randy they, the, the, they know it and of course god knows it and uh, that path will eventually end, and it won't be good for anybody who's on it. Randy, I'll tell you, here, here's the synopsis the way I see it. You know, for us to be a fast news society, I guess maybe we titillate everybody's mind with an interesting story every day, and then create a new story the next day so that we can keep their interest. So if somebody died, or somebody's missing, or a plane goes down with 250 people, oh well, that was a good news story for one day, but they lost their interest, and now they want to talk about a jobs report. What kind of a sick society are we living in that we don't show the caring and concern for the thousands of people that are rel related to this story because of their relationship with the people on that plane? If we just all of a sudden discard it and say, oh, well, it's old news, what the heck is the matter with human beings? Well, we've lost our souls. Uh, but just like the gentleman said when Hillary Clinton said what she said about Benghazi, uh, you know what? Uh, it still matters because we still don't know. Absolutely. And it matters. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing, Jimmy, how callous we are and distracted we are. And, uh, you know, again, as the, as the majority, so to speak, take us towards hell, uh, the, the the minority, so to speak, are fighting like you know the Dickens to save it. Uh, you know, 
we don't want to be sucked into something by somebody else's decisions. I agree. Randy, i got to get a commercial in here. I'm running a little yeah. bit late, buddy. Thank you very much for your call. Uh, calls welcome after the spot break, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, my, three locations. Serve in Magic Valley, 465 Addison Avenue, West Twin Falls, and 2331 South Lincoln, Jerome, and the brand new one. Oh, boy, a good one right there at 159 West Highway 30 going into Burley. Oh, they've really got the loaders. Oh, they've got all the coyote tractors. They've got the equipment lined up. I mean, lined up right in front of the store saying to you when you drive by, come on in. Rent me. Buy me. I can do the job for you. I guarantee you they've got everything you need. Asking for the opportunity to earn your business, bury equipment and rental. You stop into any one of those locations, Twin Falls, Burley, and Jerome, and they can help you. And we're going to, I think, have Eli on the program tomorrow representing bury equipment and rental. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Let's see, I wanted to cover a couple of other news stories really quick here this morning. Um, uh, President Obama, this really upset me, and a lot of people glossed over it and didn't catch what he had said. But yesterday, Obama basically sanctioned illegal aliens to get on and stay on Obamacare, but don't ask and don't tell. What he basically said to that community, the people that have got here illegally, and the people that have other people living here in an illegal fashion that have crossed the border in an illegal way and are now living in the United States, don't ask, don't tell, and basically this could, through Obamacare, become an amnesty program so they get the benefits that we pay for. They're here illegally. We look the other way. We pay for their health care how dumb are we? Answer that question. Well, I'm waiting for your call. Don't forget, a uh, great big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All the tires are on sale. I mean, all the tires, like the Ultra Z900, their best all-season touring tire. And for your pickup trucks, how about the Open Country AT2? Ooh, Ooh boy, that is a good tire. Better braking, enhanced traction, 40% more tread life. You know, uh, they absolutely serve you with the best in brake service. The best in front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. They've got custom wheels. What are you waiting for? All you have to do is just right now zip on in to any one of the seven locations for this great big spring tire sale going on right now at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Yeah. They're waiting for you. Stop into your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers right now. Okay, give me a call, 436, <clears throat> excuse me, 2244-1866-927-4587. We uh, kind of skipped around a little bit this morning, and uh, I had other stories I wanted to mention, but I also want to mention about good friends and good neighbors. Uh, it almost brought me to tears last night at about 530 um, outfit pulled in my yard, and a father and son got out of their pickup and went over to my blown apart haystack and put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I want to say a great big salute and thank you to Marlon and Garrett Musman. They came over here and went out, just took it upon themselves to restack that hay and retarp it, and God bless you. And I got a little waver in my throat. It means a lot to me for what they did. Thank you. Great people. And uh, that was very much appreciated. All right, give me a call. Still have time. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Oh, by the way, that semi truck that was going across the Hanson Bridge that flipped over and skidded on its side in that windstorm the other day, made the national news. It was on Fox News AM this morning at about uh, 4.40, I think it was. And uh, very, very scary conditions the other day. And thank the good Lord above, nobody that I know of was hurt seriously. 
Thank the good Lord. Real quick story about the 18-year-old girl. I'll say this before we go to the nose, uh, news. Nose news. Uh, the 18-year-old spoiled brat back east that took her parents to court and wanted more, 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 wanted more money, wanted more everything, but didn't want to live with the rules and stay at her family home. Uh, she's back at home. Yes, she is back at home. And she said she's going to drop her lawsuit and she's going to try to turn over a new leaf. My suggestion would be for the mom and dad to tell her in a very poignant way, it's not just one leaf, honey. You better turn over the whole tree. And uh, it's going to be a real tough road to hoe for this family to accept this girl back into the fold and try to have a family relationship. But uh, with the dropping of the lawsuit and everything else and the media focus that's been on this family and on this girl, wow, it's going to be years, years before they can overcome this, I'll bet. Uh, coming up next hour, we've got my buddy Doug Johnson back in Colorado that's going to be on the air. And then at 9.30, we have Representative Fred Wood that's going to give us a legislative update for 2014, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then at 10.06, of course, it's the Idaho Fish and Game Report for this month. Kelton Hatch is going to be here in the studio. And we always welcome your calls. And Gina, thank you very much. How's everything over at the studio? Did you get your breakfast this morning? I did. I had my sausage and egg breakfast sandwich covered with Salsa. It was good. Oh, my. Are you kidding me? Covered with salsa? Mm-hmm. And by the way, on the diet, I'm going to have to start weakening a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Some of the diet has commanded that I eat certain things of a vegetarian diet, and I had one of those certain plates last night. And believe me, um, certain words in our vocabulary cannot even come close to describing what I thought of that. <laughs> It was that tasty, huh? It was that bad. <laughs> I'll be back in six. Have a good day. You too. Oh, back in the saddle, hour number two. Zeb at the ranch, and of course, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, and also some of our great advertisers, like Lee's Furniture Floors and more, with the memory foam pillows. I love my pillow from... Lease Furniture, Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley. And also we want to say thank you to our great friends at Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and the across southern Idaho, we're always the short and slow. Western Way These folks really care, and many, many times we've had Kelly on our program. Western Way Services always at your disposal, whether it's trash collection, get on the weekly route service, or whether it's porta potties, whether it's construction site management, they can help you. And they've got all the dumpsters, and now they've got the new portable storage units called the Go Minis. All of this and much, much more at Western Way Services. All you have to do is call 734 6969. Western Way Services always is at your disposal really nice people uh, really nice people that encompasses a lot of folks on this program and another group that I'd like to talk about quickly is Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward and his staff absolutely during the passing of a loved one it's uh, it's really tough it's really tough to sit down and try to think about everything dot all the I's cross all the T's well their staff is always committed to upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity in serving you you and your family. Please give them a call today at 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Joel, Joel Heward and the staff at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Really nice people. Uh, add another one to the list. Really nice people. That puts us over to my friend from Colorado, and that's Joel Heward, uh, along with our good friend Doug Johnson. Good morning, Doug. How are you? 
I'm good, Zeb. I'm having a real hard time hearing you, though. Um, I apologize. For, Gina, can you turn it up in uh, his earpiece just a little bit for him? And Doug, let me know if that's better, okay? Evidently not. Say something, Zeb, so I can tell. Uh, all right, can you hear me better now? Not much, but I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, Gina, if you can boost it just a little bit, I'd appreciate it. Doug, I'll start things off this morning. Uh, last hour, I don't know if you caught any of the program or not, but uh, I was a little bit more than upset. I had a caller that uh, basically said, enough about the plane, enough about the missing people, enough about everything going on over there. I want to talk about the jobs report and American jobs. And it just m incensed me to the point where I got very, very, very upset and mad to think that we've lost our humanity in this country and around the world. Still a mystery. 250 people are missing. They don't know what's happened. And that 250 people absolutely equates to thousands of people with relatives and friends, etc. And I am concerned, and I'm not going to let this story die. Your thoughts? Well, I, I didn't hear... Uh hear you on that call, but uh, I guess I'd say two things. One is uh, we can never forget even a single soul who is missing or lost uh, to our nation, whether it be in a military action or something like this or anything else. Uh, every human life is important, and there's nothing that trumps human life, so I, I agree with you entirely on that, Zeb. I do think there is, uh, and this is not taking a position in agreement with what he said, uh, but I, I do think that um, this is being uh, beaten to death by the media almost to the point where it's probably abusive of those who are missing people because uh, we really don't have much new information. Even I, and I don't watch Fox News much anymore, I think, uh, other than this morning when you had written me and told me to try and catch something on Fox. The first time I've watched Fox in months. Yeah. But um, even they were reporting stuff as new that isn't. It's been out there for a couple of days. And so I, I sit and I, I, I cringe at how we beat these things. Down. So it's, it's a real tough one. I, I think uh, we can't forget those people. We can't forget the loss. We need to pursue it. But I think there's this balancing act that's really hard to judge where you draw that line. Well, I respectfully disagree with you. Uh, and I'll say it very uh, succinctly. Number one, there has been a lot of new information. Uh, one point of great interest to me, uh, being that I've been around aircraft in my life, is that now, all of a sudden, they find out that uh, the pilot told ground control, all right, good night, 12 minutes after they had adjusted their course to a westerly direction, why didn't ground control at that point in time say, hey, Flight 370, you're going the wrong way. These are very important points that need to be perceived and gone into. And then also they found out that on the flight data control that the pilot had built at his home, they found out now, after 11 days, that many parts had been deleted. So, Doug, I respectfully disagree with you there is new information coming out because inquiring minds want to know and this story is too important because of many factors number one if the plane went down in the Indian Ocean the families need to have closure number two if it did go to be used possibly as a uh, war of terror against another country or another nation ie Israel or America we need to know the facts and they need to get to the bottom of it so to me it's not old news well, I think I'll say a couple things. First of all, the points you raise have all been out there for at least a couple of days. Uh, I've seen them in, in news reports days ago, and Fox is reporting them as new today, and so I don't think... No, no, I didn't say that. that I didn't say that that is news today, but these are unanswered questions that need to be looked I'm into. I'm saying that they are spending so much time being the same points over and over to death that I think it's very hard on those who are missing loved ones. And so there's a balancing act we have to find somewhere. We should never forget them. We should continue to pursue it. It should not leave, uh, leave the news cycle. But you have some networks, for example, CNN is handling this 24-7. This is all they are reporting on. There's not enough there to be said. And as far as other things, you know, some things we're not hearing much of, for example, is the idea is if the plane went down in the Indian Ocean, uh, one of the experts uh, from the NTSB said yesterday that um, the fact is that this thing took a nosedive into the ocean at six or 700 miles an hour, the largest pieces left would be about the size of your thumb, and we will never detect that. So 
it's this is going to be a long, painstaking process, and and uh, I still lean to the idea that the thing probably was involved in some uh, criminal activity, hijacking or whatever. But I, uh, my point is, the replaying of the same points over and over again. I think it's very hard on the family. Yeah, you know, you might have a a point there, but still, I'm going to go back and say that. All speculation and all theories are on the table, and it's not right for you to criticize my theory, and it wouldn't be right for me to criticize your theory uh, if we each had one, which I do, and uh, I think all are on the table, and I think it's the conjecture and the looking into each theory, which has created more detective work from the various countries and the various people involved so that they have answered more of these questions. I want to know why a flight plan that had been filed basically on a straight line to go up to Beijing all of a sudden was altered and 10 minutes later after it was altered the pilot said all right good night and the ground people never said hey you're going west instead of north what's the matter with you these are things that have to be answered Doug well they should be the, the difficulty we have is we have no jurisdiction there whatsoever this is a Malaysian flight Malaysia is in control, and their government is entirely different, and their culture is entirely different than ours. And until we find a crash site or a location of the jet, that jurisdiction will remain with with Malaysia. So it just becomes demands from the U.S. to know more information. No, now, I just... My suspicion is we know a whole lot more than they're saying, but they're not making it public because they're trying to find things out before it gets into the news cycle. And so I, I think our government knows a lot more, but they're keeping it from the media. And, and I'm not opposed to that necessarily. If it will, I have a potential of resolving this. Uh, I, I suspect, and I actually, I hope in one sense I'm right, although I, I fear for the people. I hope the thing did land somewhere and the people are hostage, hostage uh, somewhere and we can get them back. But I fear that maybe even if it was hijacked, those people are dead right now. And I think the government is probably aware of a lot more that's going on. They're just not sharing it. I think your point there I would concur with. But when you made the initial statement that you said this is a Malaysian problem, it's a Malaysian airline. No, that's not correct. Because it's Wait an inter- Not to say it was a Malaysian problem, Zeb. You said it was a Malaysian airline. International law. Uh, but there again. Their jurisdiction, until they find the actual location of the flight, it is their jurisdiction. Uh, to a point you're right and to a point you're wrong, because this is an international flight involving people that are Americans, people that were Swiss, people that were Italian, people that were Chinese, etc. And uh, Malaysia basically right up front asked for help, and all these countries, 26 countries, got involved in the search. And at that point, I think you lose exclusivity is owning the problem, and you've opened it up for detective work from all countries. Well, I, I think in morality you do, but I think that technically, legally, from what my legal experts I've, I've read and, and some I've talked to, I, I think that they still have control of this investigation until they are willing to hand it over. And I think there's a lot of pressure on Malaysia from a lot of governments right now to give it over to the U.S. because of our, our capabilities at investigating these things. I think until that happens, um, we're not going to know a whole lot more. I don't, but I think we can read some of the tea leaves, so to speak. For example, us pulling some of our resources out of the Indian Ocean That's says right. that, okay, we're, we're backing away from this because there's probably something else going on that we're not talking about. Okay, now, I want to also mention to you that uh, the more I look at the the under-the-table graft, and that's what it is, and the changing of the law without having any congressional approval or approval of the Supreme Court, I am absolutely shocked this morning, this uh, great day of our Lord, 2014, March 19th, that there hasn't been impeachment proceedings put against Obama. This man has taken it upon himself to change the law over 20 some odd times recently as of yesterday telling illegals don't ask don't tell stay on the policy with Obamacare and the other people will basically pay your way that's nothing more than creating an amnesty program for illegals to stay in this country and be on our dime for health care your thoughts I think you're absolutely right there's no doubt he's using this not only to push through the immigration reform that he wants, but also to, to keep Obamacare in the forefront. He's us, using any excuse he can to push things forward, and uh, forward towards his agenda, not forward towards the benefit of America. Uh, and, and I think that one of the dangers right now, and I'm not changing subjects, but one of the dangers right now is that people uh, think that um, 
this is going to really hurt the Democrats in the 2014 midterms, and I think they're putting a little too much confidence in it. The Republicans are notorious for shooting themselves in the foot. we still got a half a year to go, and we need to handle this very carefully because I think Obamacare really could be a nail in the coffin of the Democrat Party. But um, we need to play this right because this is going to do even more damage before it's over. You know, and I concur with you on that, and I'd like to elaborate on that with you a little bit, Doug, but we have a caller with a question. Quickly, caller, so we don't run short of time. Yeah, I know this is, does imply uh, over, the, uh, over the break, ABC News was talking about Eric Holder and how they sued Toyota for deceiving the people for deceiving the people for one point some billion and it, and Holder sits there with that pious jerk sits there and has judgment like he has a right when he has deceived the people at Obama about Obamacare fast and furious and it just amazes me that we let them get away with it and I'll hang up. You know that's a really good point and I, I respect that caller with his point Doug because here they sit in almost a solemnistic uh, attitude on the throne as if they were a King Solomon and they pass judgment on others but yet look at the rocks that are being thrown at their windows because of all the different things IRS, Benghazi, etc. Yeah, it, this is the, the classic double standard. This administration lives by a double standard and part of that's because they think of themselves as a ruling class, that they are the elite. This is the progressive mindset and people who study progressivism understand this that they believe they are the elite few who know better than we do to make decisions for us and so the end justifies the means they can do anything to achieve their goals because there is nothing that is not r wrong for them to do even lying cheating stealing whatever all that's okay if they do it it's not if we it's it is if they and so we live this double or we live in this world of double standards and i think the caller makes a good point you know being amazed that this we allow this to continue to go on this is where voters need to be so incensed we have to remember something, Zeb. If we don't change this at the at the at the voting booth, a lot of people are frustrated right now. And uh, a friend of mine who um, uh, tours the country speaking uh, about this issue, he's actually not from this country, but he's here to try and help save this country. Uh, he was in Georgia at a Tea Party event recently, and uh, one of the guys there, you know, there said, "You know, we've just had it. We're just ready to, to just have a new revolution." And he looked at him and he said, "Do you have any idea what you're saying?" And the man said, "Well, you know, many of us are, are well armed, and we'll take our stand if this government's going to be uh, corrupt." And he said, "You don't understand. It's not just about the weaponry that the U.S. military has they would bring against you, but if this government thinks it's going to fall, they will call in allies from countries." like Russia and China and Nicaragua to save this government and keep control for the left. And he said, you will be fighting foreign soldiers on our soil in your own neighborhood. And the guy had never thought of that. And I think Americans need to understand, this must be settled peacefully at the ballot box. We don't want or need a war. Well, I concur with what you said, but you cannot ever, ever blame someone for having feelings of, we're in over our head, what can we do? And they absolutely are at their last knot on the rope. You can't blame pe people for feeling that way, Doug. Oh, I don't blame them at all. In fact, uh, what I would say is, this is one of the dangers. We are seeing people get overly confident right now, saying the Democrats are in trouble, they're going to lose big in the midterms, and I think this is where we got to be very careful and, and plan accordingly. The, the GOP is split so, so terribly I right agree. now. The establishment is trying to destroy the Tea Party and conservatives, and yet it's the Tea Party, it's the conservative branch of the party that has actually kept the party going. It's actually what gave the party the boost in 2010. I agree. And uh, we, we need a, uh, what we need, Zeb, real simply, is exactly what happened in 1980. After the establishment rejected Ronald Reagan in 1976, the citizens got mad, the citizens rallied, and in 1980 they forced Ronald Reagan upon the GOP establishment. And the result was obviously a big win for America. We need to do the exact same thing from now through 2016. Okay, now I want to get back uh, to the point before the caller. We were talking about Obamacare. Now I know from your past history that you have been in the insurance business and so have I, okay? We're both on an even keel here, Doug. And you know as well as I know that you can go ahead and say you're going to buy a policy per se, but until the money has exchanged hands, there is no such coverage and no such said policy. 
And for Obama and his administration to say that they have these millions on Obamacare and then not have the numbers to provide to people saying how many have paid, we're looking at a very, uh, a big Trojan horse with an empty inside. This is a mess with Obamacare, Doug. It's a terrible mess, and they know full well how many have paid. They're just not willing to say it. That's right. Now, Kathleen Sebelius, who's clearly an idiot who doesn't know what she's doing, um, she may not personally have looked at what the numbers are, but I guarantee somebody in the upper echelon of Department of Health and Human Services knows exactly what the numbers are. They don't want to share it because they don't want the blowback from the American public when they hear that a lot of this isn't being paid for, which means the American taxpayer is going to foot the bill. Well, you know, why can't these figures be released? I mean, truth and information and everything else that we have the right to know, the general public, our congressmen, our senators, we need to know and why, who and who else has not paid for this thing, and who's signed up. It's not that hard, Doug. It's not rocket scientists. No, it's not. It's very simple. I mean, it would be like being a business owner with a partner and not sharing with your partner or the financial data. Um, we are the, we as the taxpayers are the partner. That's right. And um, I, I, you know, technically by uh, by the structure of our government, the House holds the purse strings uh, to to what goes on in our government. So what I don't understand is why isn't the House screaming bloody murder demanding this information? In fact, why aren't they automatically given this information? That's because right. This is something they should be able to watch and have oversight on, so they can see what's going on with the budgets. Doug, on a, a lighter note somewhat, to wrap up the program this morning, uh, you, I, I like you, I like your attitude, we can agree to disagree on certain topics, but that's good for the program. But I gotta know, are you one of these guys that thinks that we should be defining what words we can say and what words we can't say? I mean, there's another big push now by the liberal left to stop usage of certain words. And I am so offended by this that I intend to use those words that want to stop even more on my program what are your thoughts i think freedom of speech is freedom of speech and so you have a right to say anything you choose because that's what freedom is. i don't have to like it i don't have to agree to it you know i mean my, personally not saying i'm not speaking as as a, a governmental thing personally i wish there was no cursing ever anywhere i don't curse i don't like it i find it extremely offensive any curse word whatsoever but on the flip side I also understand we live in a free society, and so I will defend a person's right to go out and use whatever language they want, even though I may not like it. Absolutely. And it seems to me, with all the perils of Pauline that are going on right now around the world, in every corner of the world, with every country in the world, we've got much more to be concerned about than the liberal left considering the cancellation and or fining for people using the word bossy. How absolutely dumb is that? Well, it is dumb, especially when you consider the words they do allow and don't find people for. Absolutely. Not that they should on any word, but it, it, it to me, is a good example. You see, when we start to control people's language, the next step is controlling their thoughts. That's which right. we've already seen them start to do in some instances, uh, especially regarding homosexual rights. And so, uh, you know, the government, uh, some of the people have said, you know, with businesses regarding homosexual rights, we want to change the way they think. We don't want these businesses to think the way they do. Yeah. And so uh, controlling speech is just the, 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 uh, the foretaste of controlling thought. And I think this needs to be, uh, a strong stand needs to be taken. We can, as a society, not a government, but as a society, we can reject certain language and say, we don't accept that, we, you know, good manners says you don't use that language. That's different than saying our government will tell you how you can speak. Bingo. I think we need to take a strong stand to allow people to speak the way they choose. I wished I had another 30 minutes. I mean, a very invigorating conversation this morning, Mr. Johnson. And before I let you go, just to show you that my heart is in the right place, tell everybody in my audience about your brand new book. Okay. And I know we only have a minute, so I'll make it quick. We have a new book called The Leadership Secret. If they go to uh, <clears throat> horsesenseblog.com or dougjohnsononline.com, the book is on the front of both those websites, and they can just click on it. It'll take them to a link to learn more about it. Um, the book is about leadership and how we choose, uh, what, the, what the key is to choosing good leaders uh, for every area of our life, not just our government, but right now especially our government, but also in any other organization or situation. And so uh, hopefully they'll find some interest there. They can get it online. They can also go to virtually any bookstore, and, and they can order it. 
so uh, it's called the Leadership Secret, and um, I hope people enjoy it. All right, Doug Johnson, Colorado. Very, very good segment this morning. Uh, I'll have my people call your people. Your people will arrange with my people a time that you and I can discuss our people. Have a good job, a good day, Doug, and we'll be in touch with you, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Zeb. I enjoyed it. Talk All to right. You. Take care. Thank you very much. Doug Johnson in Colorado, good friend of mine. Oh, we've got to pay some bills here real quick. Don't forget, for all your life insurance, all your health insurance, all your retirement planning, all your employee benefits, oh, my goodness, you're sitting there scratching your head going, holy smokes, I forgot all about that. I've got to take care of that. Who do I call? I've got the answer. I've got the answer right here. It's Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Easy number to remember. I called them yesterday, 436-4424. Once again, calm down. Don't get nervous. They'll help help you 436-4424 Cameron and Siemens Insurance in Rupert Oh by the way I've been mentioning all this week there is going to be an outstanding farm sale tomorrow at the Don Taylor Farms auction That's going to be at 1200 North 200 East of Rupert Oh my they're going to bring the gavel down at 10:30 a.m. sale managed by Musser Brothers Auctioneers and Real Estate Randy Musser 733-8700 will answer more questions This is going to be a really good sale tractors big balers all the loaders and backhoes semi tractors uh, beat equipment, ground working equipment, 10 wheeler trucks, uh, trailers and sprayers, all of this and more. This is a sale you do not want to miss. Don Taylor Farms Auction, March 20th, tomorrow, Thursday, 10 30 a.m., 1200 North, 200 East of Rupert, managed by Musser Brothers Auctioneers. Whew, we're going to go back to the phone line right now, and we're going to say a good morning to a very dear friend of ours, and that, of course, is Representative Fred Wood. Good morning, Fred. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Doing well. You know, Fred, I'm going to have I'll have to break in on occasion and do some commercials, but I want to start things off on this segment, and I think we'll make this an annual deal. Right at the conclusion of the legislative session, I'll have you on the air so that we can discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. So here we go. It's all yours. Legislative session 2014, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Go ahead. Thanks, Seb. Well, first of all, I think there's more good than there is bad, and certainly all of the ugly was last session, and there wasn't any ugly this session, which was very refreshing from my perspective. I think the two big uh, issues that we managed to go through the session without uh, any fighting, there was a lot of vigorous discussion. Um, a lot of hallway discussion, a lot of groups getting together between the, uh, within the House and between the House and the Senate and between the legislature and the governor's office. Mm -hmm. And that was the uh, recommendations that came out of the governor's education working group. And secondly, the Justice Reinvestment Act that uh, just passed the legislature. Those were the two big pieces of legislation, and it was done in the right way. It was done by people getting together and figuring out what the citizens really needed and then how we can accomplish that. So, so, so that's the good report from the legislative session at the 100,000-foot level. Now, there were some things that were put off and most of the things that were put off, Zeb, were put off because there's more work needed to be done mm -hmm. as opposed to they were put off because there was great animosity and a lot of fighting and stuff. Uh, one of those is water. There are two or three or four water issues that will need to be addressed in the next year or two after the Supreme Court has weighed in on uh, a couple of issues that are now before the Supreme Court, but it's just not yet time to take those up. They need to, they, everybody agrees they need to percolate uh, for a little bit uh, longer. Mm -hmm. um, the, there were several issues in health care. They weren't major issues, um, but the issues of time-sensitive emergencies and the transformation of behavioral health, et cetera, all passed the legislature with good margins. 
no fighting about them or anything. I think, Zeb, in the eight years that I've been here, uh, more has been accomplished in this session with the least amount of animosity and fighting that, uh, that I've ever seen here. And, by the way, we're coming home Friday. Okay. So things are looking pretty good from the legislature this year. Well, let me kind of go into certain aspects, and I'm not trying to stir up any dust or make any mud, but I think it's worthy of conversation. Number one, last Sunday, the Times News made a front page on their opinion op-ed page uh, that they really kind of uh, denigrated the legislative session as far as education was concerned, and denigrated the way it was completed on education funding, and thought that everything should go back on a property tax basis, and it didn't sound good at all from the Times News standpoint that you, as a legislator and legislative session, really accomplished anything for education. How would you respond to that? Well, I just simply disagree with that article, and I read that article. Um, what people forget uh, with respect to the property tax is that nobody likes taxes, Zeb, but the property tax is the tax that that people truly dislike. And secondly, you have to remember that when that property tax issue came before the legislature, now that was the year before that I got to the legislature. Mm -hmm. However, I've heard numerous recounts uh, of all of the uh, issues leading up to that and the discussion leading up to that. Uh, property taxes were getting to the point of just simply being outrageous. And there was a tax revolt just about to occur in the state of Idaho, particularly um, in central Idaho, uh, western Idaho, and in particular northern Idaho. I mean, some of the property taxes had gotten so outrageous that people were literally being forced out of their homes and businesses. So something had to be done. Um, and putting it on a broader-based tax, which is the sales tax, as opposed to property tax, which only property owners pay, only seemed to make sense. Now, I get the fact that in a downturn in the economy, then you also get a downturn in revenue. But I'm sorry, people have to deal with that, mm -hmm. and government has to deal with that. And the issue is not to raise taxes during a down economy, because all you do is punish uh, the businesses and you punish uh, households. So I get the fact that funding had to go down and the proponents of education who don't like to see that uh, like the Times News. But I, th I just flat disagree with the Times News article there. I thought... Uh, I thought it was misplaced and misguided. Well stated, Fred. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Now, another subject that it scares me, and I'm sorry I'm going to beleaguer this a little bit more this morning because I'm very, very concerned about water. I'm very concerned about water rights. I'm very concerned about first in line, first in time. All of this, I'm very concerned that if we keep putting it on the back burner and don't address it, bang, we're all of a sudden going to get hit in the face again. You mentioned just a few moments ago that maybe next year or the year after. Can we afford forward to settle this in one or two years? Well, I think the issues that truly have to be addressed, um, we have to put off until the Supreme Court decides, and they will decide in the interim by next session. And a couple of those are the fill-refill issue um, and um, the issue of where beneficial use fits in with respect to the priority uh, uh, doctrine, et cetera. I think the uh, court has been fairly clear on the latter of the two. They have yet to weigh in on the first one, but that issue, or at least a portion of it, is before the court, as I understand it. And I think everybody agreed, rather than try and fix it until the court decides at least what it's going to decide that in the, that issue, I think would be getting the cart before the horse. I, I think we're fine by waiting a year, Zeb. I really do. Um, but it will have to be addressed. I certainly agree with that. The other issue that's got to be addressed, of course, is we've got to stabilize that aquifer and we've got to start increasing recharge in that aquifer mm -hmm. to stabilize it. Mm -hmm. uh, there ain't any doubt about that. Now, we have made progress 
with respect to that. And then there is legislation that still hasn't cleared the House, but my understanding is that the deal has been cut to clear the house, uh, clear both houses with respect to taking a part of the tobacco tax and putting it into infrastructure all along the Snake River Plain to uh, have a source of funding to start developing the infrastructure such that in those years that we have excess water, we can start significantly recharging that aquifer, because that's the answer in the long term. I agree. Uh, Fred... Uh... That has not been put off. We, we have worked, and my understanding is, is that legislation will clear, uh, unless there's a hurdle that comes up that I don't know about as of last night at 6 o'clock. Okay. Fred, I'm going to ask your patience for 30 seconds as I pay some bills. I'll be right back with Representative Fred Wood. Stand by. I want to remind everybody about all the great buys, great buys for your comfort and beautification of your home at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. 459 Overland and Burley. My goodness, they're celebrating their 67th anniversary sale, and they've got all your carpet, they've got all your vinyl flooring, all the mattresses, bedroom sets, sofas, love seats, chairs, you name it, it's all there. Go on in and just stand back and envision yourself in any one of the complete bedroom sets or, of course, the living rooms. They can help make you a room, a complete room made simple. Everything is right there available at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Nice people to serve you at 459 Overland and Burley. It's Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Uh, Fred, uh, I don't run from any subject on this program, uh, and I've been very vocal about my dislike and distaste for the gay, lesbian, and transgender movement in this state and across the United States. I thought that they really were low-classed in what they tried to do to shut down the legislative session and let people in and out the doors, including the government, or the governor, pardon me, and uh, they wanted special rights, in my opinion, with an adding of words to a bill. What are your thoughts on this because it's not going to go away it's not going to go away Zeb and here are my thoughts first of all I think uh, the biggest problem is that this is a solution looking for a problem that in my opinion if it is out there we're not seeing it and what I've told uh, the proponents of that who come to my office peri periodically I say now listen if there's a problem out there, why don't you bring to the legislature the exact dates and the exact times and the exact people who have been discriminated against with respect to housing, with respect to jobs, etc. And, you know, they don't do that because, to my knowledge, Nobody does that. And now, people may disagree with their lifestyles, etc., but I don't know of any instance in the state of Idaho where people have been denied housing, have been denied jobs, have been denied That's right. food service, etc., because of their sexual orientation. That's right. That's first. Second, you know, if you look at the civil rights movement, which is what they want to attach themselves to, in my opinion, it doesn't uh, rise to the civil rights movement. Uh, it doesn't rise to discrimination against race, uh, gender, uh, or religion. This is like discriminating against left-handed people, mm -hmm. um, blonde people. Um, sexual orientation, etc. It's just, it just simply doesn't rise to that level uh, that we have seen in the United States. And everybody, of course, understands the bad things that we've gone through in the United States with respect to religion and with respect to race um, and gender inequality. I don't think this goes to that level. And I think if there were real discrimination going on, the legislature would act. And thirdly, you know, I think all of their efforts at this point in time are counterproductive. And I said I had uh, the leader of that organization come to my office and request an appointment. And, of course, I always talk to him. And I told him, I looked right across my desk and I said, 
you know, you're being markedly counterproductive now. I said, there's not anybody here in the legislature or anybody of my constituents that I know of that wants to openly or will openly um, discriminate against any human being there is. But I said, you are counterproductive at this point in time. You're trying to close down the legislature. You're trying to interfere with the legislative duties. I said, at $30,000 a day, you have no right to do anything like that. I said, if you wanted to be and believed in your own cause, you would go about it in a different manner because you're simply causing yourself all more grief now. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't concur more. That's all I, I know. I'll tell, you, Fred, I I'll tell you something, Fred, that really bothered me about what they were trying to do and trying to achieve up there is uh, the word discrimination kept being thrown around so loosely. And, you know, being in the real estate business, as I am for another sidelight to my life, we have to be so absolutely careful about discrimination in any form and all these people want in my opinion with the add the words are special rights and a media focus on their lifestyle and that absolutely sickens me and I think that's why they're not gaining any traction uh, Zeb is uh, I think there's probably an awful lot of people that that uh, sympathize uh, exactly with that and again I still say that the number one issue is is that they can't bring any cases forward where people are discriminating against them. And so if if that's not happening, then why are we seeking special legislation? That's I, right. That you know people don't people don't like that. It's as simple as that. Fred, there's a topic that you and I have discussed many, many times, and you know I'm not going to let you off this interview without discussing it again. And it's a problem that just seems to be getting bigger and enveloping everybody in the state of Idaho and the Northwest, and for that matter, with the letters to the editor from Kentucky and New York, people around the United States are trying to tell Idaho farmers and ranchers how they should change their lifestyle to protect the wolves. I'm fed up with this. We made an agreement with the environmental groups and also United States Fish and Wildlife for 10 breeding pairs, 100 wolves. That has been far exceeded until today, still is probably around a thousand head of wolves in the state of Idaho, far exceeding the agreement, but nobody seems to care, and the environmental groups get really puffy when all of a sudden we're going to have a wolf hunt or we're going to have management of these wolves. Fred, this problem is still ongoing. Well, as you know, the wolf legislation has now passed um, the uh, uh, legislature. Um, I think it was sent to the... Uh, amending order in the Senate because there was a little issue um, with a constitutional prohibition on more than 20 departments in state government, mm -hmm. so it had to be put under some department. The Senate fixed that. It's coming back to the House today. We'll vote on it today. Um, the funding has been reduced down to uh, an annual appropriation of 400000 or whatever the legislature feels they can appropriate. And this particular legislation is designed for wolves that are outside of the hunting season. Remember, wolves are a big game animal, and that was the deal we cut. Um, and, of course, we got open season in most places in the, uh, in the state. But the, this legislation was meant for those wolves that are getting after domestic livestock, domestic right. pets, uh, and uh, where they're particularly... Um, hurting the wildlife population of the state. I think that we, you know, Zeb, we just simply have to turn away all of, not turn away, but just kind of not pay attention to or disregard all of the stuff that comes from out of state that tries to tell the state of Idaho how on earth we live our lives and how on earth we manage our affairs here. Uh, that's why we've never gone along with mostly if, well, what the federal government wants to do. Mm -hmm. Idaho has been very protective of our citizens and our state and our ability to manage our own affairs. And you, as Ed, know better than anybody that Idahoans can manage their affairs better than anybody else can. So I know that we're under attack from all over the world about that, but sorry, 
we're going to do it our way. Absolutely. Now, are there any issues that are going to be carryover issues that are deserving a lot of study, like the water issue for next year, 2015, that during the course of this year you're going to be studying up until next January? Uh, there are. Uh, first of all, the uh, Governor's Education Work Group put out 20 recommendations. The legislature has addressed a portion of that. Uh, I don't know the exact number because they addressed portions of some of the recommendations, uh, all of some, and put off uh, others for further study. Uh, so that's one big area. The second area is the, the water issues that I talked about uh, previously. Third is the issue of what is the state of Idaho going to do with its indigent health care system? Mm -hmm. We have the highest cost, most inefficient uh, system of taking care of the indigent uh, uh, portion of our health care, and uh, people will be working on that over the summer and the fall, and that's what my primary interest uh, will wind up being. Also, of course, uh, probably be involved in the water uh, issue to uh, some extent probably will not be involved in the education issue. Uh, those other two are big enough that, uh, that that'll take care of, of uh, all of my time. But that's what I see um, as three significant issues over the interim that uh, legislative committees will be working on. All right. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you, Fred, uh, taking the time from a very busy schedule up at uh, Boise during the legislative session to come on this program. You've always been straightforward and honest, and I have the utmost respect for you and your abilities. Representative Fred Wood, thank you for calling in this morning. Seb, God bless. Thank you, and uh, I'll see you home uh, over the weekend. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Representative Fred Wood giving us a legislative update for 2014, and I appreciate it. Well, we got time to take some calls. Give me a jingle, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. While I've got just a moment here, I want to tell you about what's going on over at Let's Ride, Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. They're open Tuesdays through Saturdays. 9 to 6, and if you're not aware, it's snow check time for your 2015 snowmobiles. What do you mean? Well, you go in and put $500 down, and you can personalize your snow machine, your brand new snow machine. That's right. Choose your snow machine, choose your color, choose your options, customize your snow machine to suit your riding style. Right now, get it done at Let's Ride. And don't forget, too, they've got just oodles and oodle. What's an oodle? Well, a oodle is quite a few. ATVs, I mean, a bunch over there. Brand new one, used ones, stop in, look at the showroom floor, holy buckets, they're all there for you. And you can have fun up in the hills this summer. It's going to be fantastic. A great parts department, best service guys in the valley, and also all the accessories at Let's Ride, where the fun is sold, Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. Really a neat place. All right, let's get some calls, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I was going to ask Gina last hour, and I didn't have time. Um, Gina, right after we do the weather, I want you as a mom to, we're going to talk a little bit about this 18-year-old spoiled brat. I had little time in the first hour. And uh, trying to make um, kind of reparations to a bad family situation, we'll talk about this after the weather, okay? Okay. I want to remind everybody the weather this hour brought to you by Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Purchase a firearm from Red's Trading Post and receive training bucks. What are those? Well, you can use them for LMS defense and Shaw shooting to use in their rifle and pistol training courses. Absolutely the best. All your guns, ammo, and accessories are at Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. And right now, Michael Rogers Weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. You are listening to the biggest weather whiner this side of the Mississippi River. You better believe it. Hey, I haven't been to Idaho in quite a while. I come up from Nevada. You know what's cold here? And to get serious, uh, it's going to be partly cloudy for today and also for tonight. Same temperature as was yesterday. In mid to upper 50s, the uh, overnight lows will be in the mid to upper 30s. Now, 
We're going to have another wind event for tomorrow. I'm telling you ahead of time now. Wind gusts 25 to 35, gusting to 40 for most of the day tomorrow. You can take that information and after what you went through day before yesterday, you now know what you need to go through. So enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. The only way you got. Thank you, Michael. Excellent weather forecast and warning about more winds coming in here. And remember, Red Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. For the best of guns, ammo, and accessory, Red Trading Post. Gina, this story back east uh, with this 18-year-old girl, and I, I'm very hard-pressed not to uh, also mention 18-year-old brat, spoiled brat, that's the way I feel about her, uh, not getting her way and being told that she had to adhere to chores around the household and also uh, certain times she had to be in, she had to adhere to the family values, etc. And she rebelled and took her mom and dad to court in a lawsuit saying, I'm 18, you're not going to tell me what to do, but you're also going to give me the money for my future your education, I'll move out, but you've got to pay. How do you make reparations to a family that is absolutely, they, they were at a hate each other point, now they're trying to get back together? Lots of counseling. Oh, that boy. family's going to go through lots of counseling. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that she came to her senses and she actually dropped the lawsuit. Uh, of course, she was always welcome back home. Her parents had said that from the get-go. That's true. Uh, I think that, honestly, uh, that uh, when she was denied right at the get-go from the judge the first go-round, I think that was kind of a slap in the face for her, and maybe she woke up just a little bit, and then maybe, the fa and this is just self-speculation on my point, uh, maybe the family that she was actually staying with at the time, who was actually bankrolling her, said, yes. oh, well, shoot, we're not going to get any money out of this, so, honey, uh, maybe it's best if you do move You on. know, right there, let's elaborate on that point a little bit. Uh, if I were the family of the girl, okay, I would, uh, with my temper and also my vindictiveness about how that other family basically helped turn their daughter against them, yeah. I would consider a lawsuit against that family just for the comfort of knowing that I'm going to get even with them for breaking up my family. Uh, you know, uh, why would another family want to intervene on someone else's family business? Absolutely. Really, you know, I, I don't understand that. There have been points in times where, you know, I've helped out the neighbor girl, but I never interfered in, you know, the the situation between her and her mom. I never did that. I'm like, honey, okay, you and your mom are having a fight. You can come over and you can sleep on my couch, but you and your mom have to make things good. I'm yeah. not going to get involved. In So I've, I've been kind of in, I've been that parent, and I've, you know, been in those shoes, but just to, to bankroll somebody and say, okay, well, I'm a lawyer, and we're going to sue your parents, and this is what we're going to do, yep. and this is, you know, and, and this is the kind of money that we're looking at. And then when the judge says, well, you know, I think we're going to put a hold on this so we can, and, and then I think that was a slap in the face to everybody because they just thought, oh, well, you know, this is a way to get a whole bunch of money. I would be almost uh, willing to say that this family, this hurt family, uh, yeah. this uh, dissected family, if you will, they'd be better off selling if they can and if the husband and the father and mother can retain some kind of employment and moving out of that respective neighborhood moving out of that environment and basically trying to get a fresh start it would almost be worth it because sitting around the kitchen table in the breakfast morning or the evening hours next door neighbors to the family that tried to break your family apart mm -hmm. I couldn't do it no, I couldn't do it either. And of course, I do know that the the dad is he's a, like a retired police chief. Yeah. And I'm sure that the mom is retired as well. But you know what I would do since my if I was them and my hip family had just been put under the national media microscope for some family business because my daughter was you know being a little brat. Yeah. I would want to move. I you know my life has just been dissected. I've been put under a microscope. Um, you guys can butt out and just leave me alone. And and by the way, let's also point out that the daughter made inferences that there had been parental abuse, and boy, that's a stain on the carpet that's not going to go away for a long time. No, and and trust me, the parents are going to always keep that in the back of their mind. Absolutely, so like I said. Lots of counseling needed for this family, and uh, it's going to take them years, years to get over this. And I agree. Place, 
they, they never really will. I agree with you. Hey, it was nice to talk to you. Good uh, segment. Thank you very much for all you do. And we're going to, I can hear the dog barking. Ruby's in the background letting us know that we have a burglar in the house in the form of six foot four Kelton Hatch. Get the police! Call the police! He's taking the dog! He doesn't want the dog. Okay. Well, we're going to have Kelton Hatch coming in from the Fish and Game next hour. Don't go away. Calls are welcome. I'll see you in six. Boy, when you hear that drum go, da, 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 and then the guitars and everything else, you know that it's time for us to get back on the air. And uh, Zebeth Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, along with some of our great advertisers, which include Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more at 459 Overland in Burley. And our dear friends at Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today, 734-6969. Once a month, and quite frankly, that's a good plenty, once a month we welcome Kelton Hatch from the Idaho Fishing Game into our studios, and it's time for the Fishing Game Report for March. Can you honestly believe, seriously, I know last month you were here, you weren't feeling really good, but can you honestly believe that it's March 2014 already? Uh, no. I, I, no, not at all. I wrote a check the other day for 2008, and so it's like... What kind of no. a time warp are you living well, in? You know, I, I, I could go back to 1990 and be happy, but... Uh, you and Michael J. Around. Fox ought to get in the same time car. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it, it blows me away. I look at, you know, the... I've got a kid that he's going to be a senior this year, and I remember when he was tiny, and it's just everything's going by fast. Is your boy going to be a senior? He is a senior. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought he was going to be like a sophomore or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, Dad's got a little tear in his eye because he realizes when he shaves, the gray hair is there on purpose. Yeah, I, that's why I shave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse. Now, is he your youngest? No, I've got one more. One I've got, more. I've got a, a, a young and He's 13. and so. You know, I, I wrote a poem about that. It's going to be in my book about the door closing for the last time. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. It really so, gets to you. It does, but it's just amazing how fast things go. And oh, this year yeah. is just like, I'm sitting here going, I thought it was just Christmas. Well, no, no, it, it just, it, yeah, things just, it seems like we get going faster and you can't get far, far enough out in the country to slow down. No, and in your job, <laughs> working with the fish and game, you know, you mentioned to me, and it was surprising to some extent that the winter months, if you will, are much more busy for you than they are during the oh, summer. Yeah, they're just brutal. This time of year and or, uh, in the winter, I mean, just getting meetings done, trying to get through season changes. Right now, we're getting into lek counts and yeah, population yeah. counts, and we're just, we get into just so many different things this time of year. And then during hunting season, it actually slows down some. And that seems like it would be, com but you ta have taken everything else off your plate by hunting season, and that's basically the only thing you're dealing with. Yeah. Is, you know, is is talking to hunters and sportsmen. Well, Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fish and Game. Uh, once a month, we gather here at the river, and uh, uh, sing psalms and everything else, and uh, you Kelton's, sing. yeah, well, you can hum along, and we try to answer all the questions we can about the Idaho fishing game and what's happening in the news, etc. And one of the topics, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I want to commend and compliment Kelton because he took the time and the effort, which really far exceeds anything he's ever done before, to uh, print in large print the agenda that we're going to talk about this morning. Thank you. Well, you know, you can see the gray hair coming in on you also. So. Coming in, I'm white. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Don't be. I'm trying to be nice. Well, I know you're old, and we wanted you to be able to see. <laughs> truth, truth. Hey, commission meeting in Boise, when is it and where? Well, the commission meeting is going to be March 19th and 20th. Oh, that's today. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah thank, today, I'll, I'll help you, Kelton. It started, yeah. And tonight... Yeah. We are actually having the public hearing at 7 p.m. Okay. And so if people have anything that they want to talk about, we've, we've got a bunch of changes that we're looking at. And I was going to talk a little bit about the changes, but what, what this meeting is is for season setting. I see. What we're going to have for Where our Where is it, by the way? In Boise. In Boise. In Boise. At? at the Walnut Building. The Walnut? Yeah, it's at the Walnut Street Building. Okay. Oh, no, this is actually, they changed it. Washington Group Plaza. Um, it's right near the Walnut Building. You turn down uh, Walnut, and the Washington Plaza is um, on the north side of the road. Isn't that someplace where the Steelheads play hockey? 
No, this oh, is downtown. This is not too far from BSU. Oh, okay, all right. It's right down by the Ram in okay. that area. Just well, the Steelheads used to play downtown, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I, I had know. tickets there one night. I've, I've never been to a Steelheads yeah. game. Anyway, so it, it starts today. It starts today, and then tonight they'll have the, the, the public hearing, and that starts at 7 p.m. And some of the things that they're going to be discussing is, uh, like our proposals for the Magic Valley region, and I brought a list of them, and I wanted to read through a few of them just so folks knew what was going on. The okay. ones that are going to affect most of the listeners in this area is we're looking at actually putting in a controlled archery hunt for Unit 54. That's right south right, of me. Yeah, right here um, out your back door. Yeah. Well, you actually, let's see, Highway 30. Actually, it would be just on the south side of the road. Yeah, as soon as you cross Highway 30 is Unit 54. Yeah. And so um, we're looking at putting that controlled. And the reason is, is um, the voting, I mean, when we got public uh, input on that, we were really close to about 50-50. Um, on what people wanted, but we've 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 seen such a dramatic increase in the number of hunters down there. We went from uh, 230 hunters 10 years ago to over 900 bow hunters in Unit 54. In Unit 54 alone, wow. and you know, and we don't know how solid those numbers are because I know that a lot of people that hunt 54 also hunt 49 or 48 or 43 or 55. What would you attribute the interest or the bigger interest in bow hunting to? Well, the drawing odds are getting tougher down there for rifle. We when it, we first moved here 11 years ago, you could get a dag in the South Hills. It was like a one and two, one and three drawing odd. Yeah. Only three, two to three people put in. Now we're setting at about a one and seven drawing odd, and people want to hunt close to home. Um, and so this, uh, hopefully what this will do is... Uh, uh, reduce the the overall number of hunters down there, but the hunters that really want to hunt there, and just that unit, um, will have a better a better quality of hunt. Plus, there, I mean, there's a lot of issues that we've been looking at uh, age of buck and things yeah. like that. We're having about an 18 percent harvest success in that unit, so if there's about 200 deer being killed a year with a bow down. What there. is the interest, though? I mean, what is the major propelling interest in bow hunting to get people involved? It's a much, in my opinion, much tougher way to hunt. Uh, it's a much more demanding way to hunt. Uh, why? Why is there more interest in that? You know. It, for me, and I can only really speak for myself, the reason I got into it is because I'd, I'd harvested enough deer with my, my rifle. Your rifle. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to have a little more challenging opportunity. Um, it's warmer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, you can get You're out. Being honest. You know, you can get out on nice days. I've talked several times about I love getting up. You know, you're up at five. You're glassing. You take a nap for a couple hours. You, you love those naps, I don't you? I love those naps. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you see something good to chase, you can go chase it. If you don't, you can lay down take a We're nap. We're talking deer here. Right. Deer, yeah, I see. you bet. <laughs> and um, then you can lay down, take a nap, and then you can go hunting that evening. Now, when you go bow hunting, and I know nothing about bow hunting. My son Jake is a great bow hunter. Mm -hmm. But, uh, boy, you've really got to learn, study, and uh, procure the right habit to get these deer. Because you've almost got to think like a deer, act like a deer, more so than with a rifle hunt, don't it, you? It is. It's just more of a game of patience. Yeah. You know, oh, I mean, boy, I can't a, go. You know, <laughs> it, it's, you know, I've set on uh, little patches of sea and ophus, that buck brush and stuff yeah. like that. I've set on those for four hours waiting for a deer to stand up, five hours. Wow. You know, you'll watch them bed down in that. You'll go down, you'll get within where you feel is a comfortable bow range. You'll sit there and you'll wait for, you know, f three to four or five hours until they stand up and you get what a What is shot. a comfortable bow range? 30 yards. That's 30 about, yards. That's what, I, that's my, my, I mean. I'm not so roughly say 150 feet. 150 feet. So you try to get nice and close. Well, and actually, ninety feet. Pardon yeah, me. Yeah, ninety but, feet. Yeah. But no more than. Jake was telling me no more than a hundred and some feet. But hundred and some. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, so, people practice a lot. I guess. I mean, I shoot further than that when I'm practicing. Yeah. But the thing is, is there's so many things that can happen. A twig you're not seeing, or the deer moves just as you click your release. You're only shooting a 300 feet per second, 280 feet per second arrow. You know, and It's so, kind of like the old days of shooting a flintlock rifle. It is. You got that. You got to really hold the target, you don't you? You do. Yeah. So, but, you know, and the other thing is, is people want to hunt close to home. It's close. It's nice. Um, lots of deer down south. And we're, we're seeing an overall increase in bow hunting. People just want to increase 
increase their time in the field, and bow hunting allows them to do that. So this meeting that starts today, uh, these are some of the things that are going to be discussed. They're, they're proposed, and if people have, you know, I mean, there's still a chance if somebody doesn't want to see that happen or somebody wants to see it happen, the commissioners are there to listen to the public's last pleas or, or any changes they'd like to see. You know, the other big, the biggest change we're probably looking at down here, that's a, one of the smaller ones, is we're looking at putting in a B tag. We're, we're, we're changing the South Hill zone a little bit. We're picking up Unit 56 as part of the South Hill zone. And what that is is 55, 56, 57. Where does 56 run? 56 is on the other side of the interstate. That's a sublet area. Over in sublet. You know, and then you've got uh, 57, which is Black Pine, and you have 55, that's those hills over by Malta, south of Burley, just right here, you know, on the other right. side of Goose Creek. Right. That's 55. Uh, the west side of Goose Creek's 54. And we're looking at making that the, the south hill zone. And then in that, we're looking at putting a B tag greenfield hunt, mm -hmm. which is you can harvest an elk from August 1st to December 31st within a mile of private or, or within a mile of irrigated ground. Okay, now let's break this down a little bit. You're not talking bow hunting right now, are We're you? We're talking uh, rifle tag for cow only. Okay. But it's basically to keep these elk out of our high-dollar crops. Yeah, and believe me, there's been a lot of devastation this year. A lot of elk up there. There is. And so that's a, that's a thing that we're looking at changing this year. We've had, we had a controlled hunt last year. We had an extra tag. Well, extra tag last year, controlled hunt. This is just giving people another opportunity. We're also looking at putting in a... On that same zone permit, we're looking at making the A tag season a unit, all of unit 55 and 57, any elk okay. archery hunt. Now, somebody the other day asked me how far to the west unit 54 ran, and I said I thought it was to Highway 93. You're, Am I wrong? You're correct. It is. Uh, okay. Highway 93 is the end of 54. When you go across 93, you hit unit 47. 47. And that's where we had a difference of opinion. They thought that was another 50 number, and I said no. Uh, I thought it was 47 going down to jackpot, literally. It, well, it goes it goes to the Nevada border. It and runs then, down the uh, the Rogerson Highway, the road that goes out to Rogerson. And when right. you hit um, when you hit the Jarbage Canyon, yeah. Um, that turns into Unit 41 okay. on the other side of Jarbage, and 46 is uh, is north is uh, north of there. And so, no, but those are probably our biggest changes. But you can go online, look at our changes on Fishing Game uh, Idaho .gov, and if you have any issues, run over there. Or if you want to make some comments, it, it, if you've never been to one and you got some time. And your wife wants to go shopping, or maybe your wife wants to go to the meeting with there you. There you go. You know, run over there and set in and listen to see how things are done. It sounds to me like there's going to be more enhanced opportunities for the sportsmen in southern Idaho. There is. You know, and it's also, hopefully our goal is, is to improve overall quality of hunts for people and to uh, help uh, landowners with uh, depredation issues. Okay. Now, we have a caller with a question. We'll take that caller, and then I'll come back with a good word from one of our sponsors. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, I'd just like to know, you know, you, he, he says how the sportsmen have their voice in this thing, but it seems like to the sportsmen that it's more about managing dollars than game anymore. Uh my, my reason for saying that is just like in Unit 55, we have a we have an early buck hunt in August. We, we're going to add another muzzleloader hunt in. Uh, their buck to doe ratio is so low. I'm just wondering, you know, those those deer get hunt from hunted from August 15th to December 19th already. You know, that's that's quite a long stretch to hunt. I'm just wondering why we don't change some of those things to maybe enhance our our opportunities to okay. shoot a nice buck instead of the way it's got. You know, you bring up you bring up a really, I think, valid point and a good argument. And if you don't mind, I'll have Kelton uh, answer that over the air. But I want to tell you how much I appreciate your viewpoint this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you very much. I think you brought up a really good point. A great question. And I see that and I hear that all the time on that. And... 55, I think you're going to end up seeing next year um, a, a limited controlled 
unlimited controlled archery hunt on the tail end of that. This muzzleloader hunt he brought up, we have a 55, 56, 57. We did drop 54 from it. What we've got is a three-year rotating muzzleloader hunt, and we, we did that in to... Um, for our muzzleloader constituency. There's been a lot of people, we don't have any close muzzleloader hunts, and so we tried to improve that a little bit. It's going to be in 55, 56, and 57 this year. Next year it'll go to 45, and the next year it goes back up to unit 52. And we try to reduce the overall permits in some of those units. I, I definitely see, you know, um, we do have a long, lot of pressure on some of those hunts. And um, 54, you know, I, I, I guess... I don't see us managing it for dollars because otherwise we wouldn't. I mean, if that was the case, I would. We would have kept unit 54, an unlimited. I mean, just a over-the-counter tag. I mean, we're we're anticipating going from 900 uh, bow hunters down there this next year to around 250, and so we are reducing because we see an issue there. We're going to reduce that one because you see 55's got that late archery hunt. We had 176 people down there last year. I mean, 10 years ago, last year we had 800. Mm -hmm. So it's grown almost as as much as Unit 54. If we'd have been able to get a little more information on that, I think we'd have seen a change in 55 this year to a... And what that means is an unlimited control is I have to put in for that tag. If I draw that tag, that's the only unit I can hunt with that tag. Right. So that doesn't allow people to hunt 54 and then jump over to 55 and then go hunt. You know, we've also put a limited control on 53 for archery. We went from 900 hunters down to 200 last year. So we are trying to make some of these, and we just can't do them all at once. I think the point that he made, though, was an excellent point that uh, with the running together of the different seasons, the different different takes, etc. There is a lot of pressure on the wildlife. There is. There is. There definitely is. And so, um, I don't know. It, it, that's, uh, <laughs> it, it's tough well, to what say. What do you do? We, how, we, how do you go about uh, dividing it up, though? That's the problem. Well, the hard part is dividing it up. And, you know, when he said that our buck-to-doe ratios are way down, well, I'd probably tend to differ. We're, we're, we're running at about 25, 26 bucks per 100 does in both Unit 54 and Unit 55. And people argue that with me and they can all day long because we've got the numbers we send officers out we send staff out and we we weren't able to fly it this year but we did a lot of ground camp comp mm -hmm. and what ground comp is is we'll go find herds of deer we'll send like 20 of us out on the same given day we glass different populations of uh, deer on the side hill we count the numbers of does the numbers of fawns and the numbers of bucks we see and that gives us our comp ratios how many does to fawn survival and that's when we get back from break there's another thing I was going to tell you about our, our fawn survival has been just stupid good this year. Okay, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I get a chance right now to talk about food. I love great places to go eat. That's why I like the Chadwick Sports Grill. Mm -hmm. 139 West Main in Burley. Today, listen to this special. I have got to figure out a way to get down there and enjoy this chicken sweet and sour over steamed rice, veggies, and soup or salad. It is delicious. It's phenomenal. The people are really great, and you're going to love the environment. Oh, I tell you, this is the place you need to go. The Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. Stop in and enjoy a really good meal today. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Jeb. Yes, sir. Uh, Elton, did yep. you mean the elk problem they're having over in Sublet? You were extending the hunting season out on that? They're actually putting a new, yeah, it's just a different type of a hunt. It's a, uh, it's a, we're putting a green field hunt in, and we've used them in lots of other areas. The green field hunt, I'm, I'm still, it, yeah, it's going to change just a little bit to allow people to be able to shoot, uh, cow elk that come into agricultural fields and are within a mile of an irrigated field to try to yeah. keep, the, the, the problem I see there is you're talking about within an irrigated field, but the dry farmers over there were the ones having the problem. Well, and, I, so and that's my in fault. In a cultivated field? Cultivated field is what I should have said rather than irrigated. Sorry about that. Okay. That's a good catch. Right. That's a so, good catch. So, yeah, that, that makes more sense to me. Yep. All right, well. Or within a mile of private land. Maybe. Not private land, because it can't be private land. Otherwise, we've got tons and tons and tons and tons of rangeland that's private. PRP. 
Yeah. Well, I'm talking rangeland, like up in the middle of Unit 54, there's lots of blocks of private property. That's right. And so if we can't use the term private land, otherwise we'd be hunting those other elk that are back in there. We're just, we're trying to reduce the numbers of depredating elk is what we're after. All right. Thanks, Earl. Appreciate it. Um, now, you mentioned, and we've got about four minutes till our hard break at the bottom of the hour. Uh, you mentioned just a few moments ago about the fawn survival rate, and you said that it was absolutely out of this world. It Weather, was. I'm sure, played a big part. Well, it was. And everybody knows what kind of mild winter we had, and we had some good spring rains, but we had an 80 over the state, we have an 87% fawn survival. Oh, that's unusual. Uh, the Isn't highest, it? the highest we've ever had since 1999 was 74%, and this is 87%. And I brought a little graph so you could kind of see it. Oh my! Um, and this is I, I just kind of drew the, the 87%. this year, 87%. This May year. I ask a very naive question? You bet. How do you scientifically and with boots on the ground? How do you go about basing that? How do you really know that you've got a good count well because one thing is we got a couple thousand radio callers out i see uh, on fawns and and does and out of um i've got another number here out of uh 484 radios on just does um in the bennett hills we had two does die out of 484 that's unusual that's really unusual and then the fawn survival we've got a lot of we got high fawn samples also with radio colors as well as with uh, ground comps and things like that so and so you know I, I think we're going to have a lot of deer out there so year. let me just throw this at you you know there was concern over the last uh, five six seven eight years uh, about the deer populations and about the loss of habitat I don't think any of that holds water anymore if you've got those kind of numbers evidently the habitat that's pretty good. Have we had any fire? I mean, any weather? Well, no, I agree with you. But that, what I'm that, saying that, is that, the habitat must be pretty good. It is without snow. The thing is, you got to realize when we get heavy snows, it reduces that habitat to a quarter or a sixth of what they can use. This year, we've had deer. I mean, you've got deer in the South Hills that were clear up, you know, we're up to 7,000, 8,000 feet. That's I true. mean, there was no deer congregated hardly anywhere you know i i do a lot of hiking in cherry springs dry creek all these areas you know i saw typically 100 150 deer a day when you actually have a winter up there you'll see three to four thousand deer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on some of those days That's true and so deer were scattered you know if we were to have a major snow episode over in you know over by the blair fire uh in the bennett's and things like that yeah we're going to have deer pushed right down to the road in everybody's fields because there isn't the sagebrush up there higher to hold them right okay well we're going to take a little break in a moment then when we come back we're going to talk about sage grouse trapping and monitoring hunter education that's something i really want to talk about and then spring bitter bush <laughs> spring bitter brush planting thank you for putting that on my sheet one thing answer this real quick for those of us that are not every year able to go hunting and sometimes we forget about putting in for the controlled hunts and the uh, application what are the dates so we don't overlook it this year for applications for deer um, it goes until June 5th so it's open now it's, no May 1st to June 5th May for, 1st. Deer, for deer elk and antelope trophy species start uh, the first of next month and go for a month and uh, spring bear and turkey you're done okay because see I missed it last year because of the surgery and I want to make sure I get in for this next year if possible you betcha All right okay we're going to take a little break send it back over to our main studios for a couple of minutes and then we'll be back with more with Kelton Hatch Idaho Fishing Game and your questions we'll be right back and now back to Zeb at the ranch on AM 1230 KBAR to reach Zeb call 436-2244 or toll free one eight six six nine two seven forty five eighty seven. And now here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you very much. Welcome back. We're on the home stretch. Uh, Idaho Fishing Game is in the studio this morning with Kelton Hatch, and we're going to have more with him in just a moment. Stand by because I'm going to tell you about Don Taylor Farms Big Auction. Oh, that's going to be tomorrow, March twentieth, ten thirty a. 
a.m., and it's managed by Musser Brothers Auctioneers and Real Estate Live. Simulcast bidding available. This is going to be a ripping good farm sale at 1200 North, 200 East of Rupert. Big ag tractors, balers, swathers, and, of course, loaders and backhoes, semi-tractors. They've got it all for you, and they are waiting to see you tomorrow at the Don Taylor Farms Auction. It's going to be a real good sale, 1030 starting time, managed by Musser Brothers Auctioneer, Randy Musser, Auction Manager, 733-8700. Did you want to see that? I do. I want to see what's okay. on the list. For okay. Sure. <laughs> we have a caller with a question. Uh, must have waited through the break, and good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, you and Kelton. Yes, sir. Hey, Kelton. Yep. Uh, breeding season for the deer and elk are in September, October, right? November. September yeah. for elk in October, uh, a little bit of October, and then most of your deer breeding takes place in de uh, November. De well, I've seen them up in, uh, used to hunt up in Knapp Lakes all through there, and I used to watch the bulls bugle like crazy and gather their herds then. Yep, well, that's what the elk do. They, the bull elk do breed earlier, and then the deer come in in November. Okay, but then you go have this hunt, uh, say what, December and January? Uh, which hunt? The one you're talking about down south. For elk or deer? Both. Well, yeah, we've got an elk hunt that goes from August 1st until uh, December 31st. And then we've got the deer hunt, that muzzleloader hunt that uh, has a limited amount of tags. I think it's going to have like 100 tags that will go over those uh, three units. And that is in November. We, we have always had some, uh, you know, we used to have 50, uh, we've got that 54 uh, late hunt that runs through November. We have a few trophy hunts is what we classify them as. All right. Al, are you there? He must have left. I thought you guys were done with oh, him. Oh, Al's gone. I, I didn't know that. Sorry, Al. Thanks for your call. We do appreciate it. Gina was done with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, here's an issue that I'm really concerned about, and uh, it's the sage grouse trapping and monitoring programs, and uh, I'm really going to watch this issue because I certainly do not want to see them listed as an endangered Neither species. Neither do we. No, I know you don't. Let's take this call, however, first and foremost, before we go any further. Caller, good morning you're on the air. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, this is probably a McGraw question, but uh, I, w I was just really curious as to why in uh, the Minicaz area here with these little lakes down by Burley and that, that we always wait until the pelicans get here to plant it and, and sort of letting them have, the, you know, being able to uh, Enjoy the fish before the pelicans eat them all. <laughs> and and also, uh, why don't you plant trout in uh, Milner Pool up there? Okay, now let's answer this over the air. And, sir, by the way, that was a couple of yep. good questions right there. I appreciate it. Great. And, uh, Kelton, go ahead and respond about the pelicans getting all the fish before we can get the fish. Well, we're trying to make sure the pelicans get fat. No. Um, a lot of it has to do with our production schedule. A lot of our fish, when they're coming out of the production lines, we, we that's something that I think we need to look at is try to... Uh, try to get some fish on there. It just depends on ice also. We, we want to have the ice off the water, and not every year it's off as early. Um, I do think that we could probably get some fish in there earlier, but it seems like, I don't know, I've been seeing uh, pelicans in the area for probably three, four weeks, and the ice hasn't been off that long. And mm. uh, You know, I'm, I'm giving you really lame answers. I, I need to talk to Doug and just get a little more information on it before that I can be completely, uh, you know, on it, I'm just uh, take a so, note and uh, take a note. And I'll respond on next week more, better on that, Good you know. Deal. And okay. so, and also on the bass in Mil why we don't plant trout in Milner. I'll f I'll find those both out. Okay, Doug McGargle, fish expert, will respond. Yep, we we'll, okay. we'll get an answer for why you. Why don't you bring McGargle along? It's going to be the April because show. You're going to have to ride with him clear out here. No, I can <laughs> see. I can see your concern. Yeah, I can see. No, I will. That's a good idea. I think okay. it would be good to have Doug before out the here. season really gets underway. You bet. Yeah, that'd be you a good bet. idea. Mm -hmm. Sage grouse. Now I'm going to say this. So and, I just come up with hard fish questions, and we'll get him out here next month. Very good, Doug McGargle, fish expert for the Idaho fishing game. Uh, sage grouse trapping and monitoring. I'm just going to come right out and say my feelings on this. I'm absolutely fire away. Well, I, it's nothing against you, but it's. 
it's just the situation and scenario that's being created to possibly put the sage grouse on the endangered species list. And I don't think the general public realizes how absolutely detrimental that would be to any and all communities in Idaho and, for that matter, the entire West. I want to do everything I can to promote the fact that it does not get listed. Your thoughts? I, I feel the same way as you. You know, I you just do not I mean, we don't want to have the federal government come in and manage Idaho's wildlife. That's right. You know, and um, so that's our goal is to keep them off. Right now, we've got a lot of different programs going. We've got some guys down staying in the city of Rocks right now. They've been trapping in the Burley area. They've got, I think, 35... 30, 30 plus hands that have got radio collars on them right now. Really? And then we got folks out at Brown's Bench <clears throat> over by Salmon Falls Creek Reservoir. They've got another 30 plus hands captured this spring. And um, then we've got a bunch of guys up working out of uh, Craters of the Moon. And what we do with this, a lot of these are we're, we're teaming up with BLM on some projects. They pay for, give us a lot of the funding for these trapping projects. What we do is, I, I may not have told people, but the way you trap sage grouse is when it's a new moon or no moon, you get out and you crank up some loud music and you get bright spotlights and you sit in the back of a truck with a pair of binoculars and drive around from about oh, 11 o'clock at night till about 3 or 4 in the morning. Wait a minute, are you serious? I am. And you look for the glint of the eye. The bird's eye. So you turn looking, on loud music? It, that, to kind of, uh, what that does is kind of... You mean to tell me you're out in the middle of the desert from midnight till 3 or 4 in the morning playing Lady Gaga and that's how you count them? No, usually Ze Zeppelin or Halen or... <laughs> it just depends on what the crew is. Whatever their their favorite type of music is. You've you, got you, to be you, kidding. Some loud Chris Ledoux works. Oh, that it's, would be better. Uh, it's, it's fine, you know. Okay. And so, um, but we'll... Uh, but the hard part is sitting in the back of a truck for three hours when it's, you know, 10 degrees and you're driving, you know, five miles an hour and you got a four mile an hour breeze and you're glassing, trying to see this little itty bitty fleck of light come off a bird's eye. And then what we do is we turn off the road and go straight towards that glint and turn the music up louder and we take the spotlights and hold them right on the birds and then you got two guys that are walking or gals that are walking the side of the truck with nets and then we we go right up there and we throw the net on top of the bird and we turn down the music and then we put a radio collar on it. You can't make this stuff up, folks. No. <laughs> no. And, and the whole night is sponsored by what, Budweiser? <laughs> yeah, well, the only problem is is you, you freeze to death and, and uh, you probably would quit doing what you're doing. <laughs> no, but seriously, when you say that... It I mean, sounds like you're... Yeah, you're, you're Partaking of some type of, uh, of mind altering substance to, to do that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but really, you do use the loud music and the lights. Yeah, it's, it stuns them, and so that you can. I've actually. Yeah, Lady a, Gaga would stun a bird, all right. There's actually a video on this. If you go to Fish and Game Sage Grass Trapping, I put a, a video that I filmed last year out in the desert on this, and you can actually watch how it's done. Who, who was the guy that figured this out? Um, I, it's probably somebody like Budweiser. Do, I don't do know. they visit him once a week in the home or something? <laughs> yeah, or? And so, but no, that's how we trap these birds. But what the information is being used for, um, we we go and we we find out nesting success. We find out chick survival, the number and what type. Of, this study that we're working on right now is on habitat selection and what type of. Uh, uh, plants are using for nesting and feeding on and what the chicks are and we, we put radio collars on chicks. No kidding. And we're also, um, you know, we're actually increasing our number of lek routes and what our leks are, our breeding grounds. And we've got like 65 volunteers that are coming in and driving around. They leave at, you know, oh, dark 30 in the morning because you need to get to the lecking ground just as the sun's barely cresting. And like I'm doing one on the middle mountain area. When are you going to do that? Um, ne I'll start next week. I've got to go out there four you know, different times. For some times. strange reason, I would like to go along and see this done. Okay. Well, I really I'm would. not trapping. I'm just going to go look at birds okay. on the lek. And you can go along with that. I'd love to take We don't that. get any Led Zeppelin or anything? No. Oh, I don't okay. listen to Led Zeppelin okay. on my truck. But um, I'm just drive out. What I do on the lek surveys and what our volunteers and the other staff will be doing is we go out and we count the number of males displaying or dancing on the lek. These are the breeding grounds. The hens will come in select the guy they want, 
And, and we go from there. And then we go from there. But, like, I'll have six different leks that I'll be hitting on the middle mountain le uh, lek route. And we'll hit those four different times, count the number of birds. And we can then we take that number and we document it against the number of birds that we've counted there for the last 20 years. Because we've been doing a lot of these lek routes for 20 to 30 years. So these birds, the males, they basically get up on a rock and start uh, dancing. It's actually typically low sage. Yeah. Um and on a ridge somewhere, and they'll get out and they'll, they uh, they really posture, fill their uh, air sacs in their chest, and and they make a deep throaty sound. So and they'll get on rocks, they'll butt you know chests a few times. Sharp tail are getting ready to lecture. So they're showing off. They're showing off. And so it's kind of a bird, John Travolta. I guess you could call it like that. I probably wouldn't have used John Travolta, but <laughs> but or John uh, Revolta. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, no, they go out there and try to try to entice the entice the ladies. And the ladies come up and select it's, the male, or usually it's the largest male in the middle of the lek because the so male that that's the prime spot where the the males want. They want in the middle of the lecking ground. Yeah. Some of our leks we have as many as fifty males. Others we used to have thirty, and we're down to like five or ten huh. males. And so, um, but it, it's pretty interesting. I, and I that love reminds the reminds me of the old alley bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you walked around with your chest all puffed out too. <laughs> uh, well, we'll continue that story at a later time. Uh, let's have a little bit of weather. Save the program. And the weather this hour is brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, three three one North Road, Jerome. Have you ever been there? These people really know how to process meat. And I'll tell you what they. Yeah, uh, jerky. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've had quite a bit of that, as a matter of fact. It's time for the tax return meat bundle. That's 75 pounds of beef, pork, and chicken for only $250. Cut the way you like it. Scarrow's Meats, locally owned custom meat processor, serving Southern Idaho for over 20 years, selling taste one bite at a time. Here's Michael Rogers' weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. You are listening to the biggest weather whiner this side of the Mississippi River. You better believe it. Hey, I haven't been to Idaho in quite a while. I come up from Nevada. You know what's cold here? And to get serious, uh, it's going to be partly cloudy for today and also for tonight. Same temperature as was yesterday. In mid to upper 50s, the uh, overnight lows will be in the mid to upper 30s. Now, we're going to have another wind event for tomorrow. I'm telling you ahead of time now. Wind gusts 25 to 35 gusting to 40 for most of the day tomorrow. You can take that information and after what you went through the day before yesterday, you now know what you need to go through. So, enjoy the day, enjoy the weather, the only weather you got. Thank you, Michael. Scarrow's Meats, our sponsor of the weather this hour, 331 North Road, Jerome, selling taste one bite at a time. These folks are good. I was uh, going to tell you one more thing on that sage grouse yeah. uh, deal. There's actually uh, in the Curlew and over in... Um, we got about five areas that we're actually trying to uh, do some uh, corvid poisoning, um, where we're What's taking in poisoned eggs, corvids, um, magpies, crows, oh, and ravens, oh, I see. I see. and we're taking eggs out to some of these areas with a corvid-specific type uh, uh, poison and uh, try to reduce the overall corvid numbers in some of those areas. Good. And, well, and the reason is, is people are saying, you know, why? You know, why? Well, we, we've got an artificial population. Some people have said that um, our populations of magpies are almost uh, 20 times more than they used to be. And, and I have a tendency to agree with that. You know, and uh, I don't know the exact number, but we've got a, a higher number due to uh, garbage dumps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. feeding operations, yeah. and all of these different things increase survival of these uh, magpies, crows, and ravens. And uh, we're starting to see groups or rookeries or uh, per, uh, roosts for these birds getting further and further into our desert areas. And um, we've had a few studies where they've done this, and they've put out several hundred eggs in a night, 
and the next morning every one of them are gone. Really? And most of them are put in nesting boxes where they can just get by bird, uh, avian predators. I've, still, so. I've maintained for a long time that we've got to eliminate the predation of certain species or that's the cause of the extinction, yeah. if there is one. You see, I guess the thing that's kind of interesting to me right now, I'm just um, uh, it kind of baffles me sometimes when I get thinking of all these different projects we're working on. And so, but yeah. it's, you know, that's why sometimes we get stre stretched a little bit thin. But I, I'm, I'm hitting the rush here because I've, I've got I two know. subjects left, and we've had a really interesting program. But one subject I think we need to spend some time on is hunter education. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily just pointing at kids. I think adults need this as much as anybody, me included. I, I agree. No. <laughs> no, I'm no. serious. I'm I, I'm, I, you know, it's a very important program. Out of all the programs of the department sponsors, this has received our number one rating. And yeah. the reason that I bring um, – Hunters Ed up. Right now is the time to get into these Hunter Ed classes and get it done. And get it done. Because like uh, Zeb was talking about earlier, he wants to make sure that he's ready to apply for his tag in Unit yeah. 54. Yeah. Well, you can't do that unless you've taken Hunter Ed if you're a new hunter. Uh, yeah, but I've been a pastor. You're old. Yeah, I'm old. So you don't Thank need you. it. Okay. <laughs> and so, Ooh. old. No, but, but really, these classes, and I've, I've looked through some of the material and everything, and very worthwhile. You bet. And, and we go through, you know, a lot of ethics type stuff, yeah. wildlife yeah. ID, yeah. firearm safety. Yeah. But uh, just for, so folks know, there's three different ways you can take it. You can come over to the office or we can sit, mail you a workbook. And you can do it by the workbook. You know, form. send me one of those. Okay, really, I'll just I'd like one. I, I wish you would make you know, a note of that. Yeah. It's a it's a workbook, and you can work through the workbook, and then you have to take an, a a field day at the office on one Saturday going through the workbook. We also have a ton of instructor led classes that are starting up right now. That's typically you meet for five days and then uh, do a field day on Saturday. So it's a, usually a six-day class, uh, two to three hours a night, depending on the instructor. And then the third way you can do it is you can go online to our Fish and Game website, and there's online opportunities. If you do it online, it costs a little bit more, um, and we don't get any of that funding from that. That's Calchemy or one of the other... Uh, uh, people that offer that web program mm -hmm. but then you have to come over for a Saturday or a Thursday night or whenever we have the field day and do a field day and you'll learn about the Idaho rules but bring keep, that book over I want to I want to have that next week next month pardon me sounds good you bet uh, Hunter education I think is invaluable and everybody should really consider that um, last but not least spring bitter brush planting did you notice I got through at that time I did I, I, was, you know, I always have to throw a little tongue to there's a lot of time. volunteers that help with that oh it's countless really? numbers of, yeah, I mean, we'll have up to 500 folks that go out and try to do something good for wildlife. Most of them are hunters and, and people that just enjoy the outdoors and they're trying to do something better to give back to wildlife. And so we've got uh, four main plantings this year. We're going to be uh, doing one over in the Blair Fire area near King Hill. So yeah. if you're on that part of the area... Otherwise, we've got a couple plantings right down here at Big Cottonwood, just down between Oakley and Burley. And then we have another one that we're looking at uh, over by uh, the Point Ranch near Rogerson on the far side of 54. Uh, most of those are scheduled. we got one for March 29th. Did they get hit pretty bad with the fire over there? The ranch itself but it didn't, but a lot of the upper part. Well, I, I can't say that. All I know is we lost a lot of habitat up I there see. high in Mule Creek. To the, actually from 93 looking east. You correct. Right. Okay. Back in 54. Okay. And so, but the gentleman you want to talk to is Dave Harper. He's our volunteer coordinator for these bitter brush plantings. His number is 324 Four three five nine. That's three, the office of the fishing game. And Dave Harper is who you want, or you can just email Dave dot Harper at IDFG dot Idaho. You give gov. these volunteers anything, like at least a candy bar, a Snickers bar, or anything? You know, we just give them your name and number. Uh, I appreciate no. that. I've had three hundred <laughs> of them call me. No, we, we a lot of times it just depends on the events. Um, we do a lot of youth groups and a lot of school groups, and we if we get some donations and stuff like that we usually try to buy a sack lunch from them Good. and we get uh, and things like that but filet mignon yeah uh bologna and yeah. chicken I see. or turkey but that's all right i you mean know, these people are nice enough to help you bet and so yeah and so and some of them it's just water and candy bars and yeah. so it just depends on you must have been funding the program that day well yeah <laughs> <laughs> i gotta pay some bills here we'll be back for the wrap-up in just a minute don't forget great big tire sale spring 
spring tire sale at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh boy, all seven of them waiting right now to serve you with the best of their tires, whether it's for your car, whether it's for your pickup, whether it's for your SUV. They've got the Ultra Z900, their best all-season touring tire on sale. And of course, they've got all the tires, custom wheels, batteries, shocks and struts, front end alignments, brake service, all of this and much, much more. You know, to sum up, when you're talking about your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center's service, seven-letter word sums it up, service to you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, Twist Family and Paul, John on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center's. Um, okay, so we got through all the bitter brush planting and the hunter education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any special events coming up in the next month of April that people need to be aware of? Anything going into spring that you want to highlight a little bit? You know, just most of those bitter brush planting events. We're going to be getting the fish trailer going here. We've got, um, I've got close to for the free 20, fishing days. Is that what for you're free about? fishing days? And then our trout in the classroom program. We've got about twenty three hundred kids right now scheduled for fishing trips. Twenty three hundred. So far, there's a lot of lures stuck in somebody's ear. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, you know, out of all the kids I've ever fished with, and I mean, it's been averaging about three, three thousand a year for the past. Well, it wasn't quite that many ten years ago, but the only one I ever had is had one little girl that got a, a, a hook in her ear uh-huh. and lots of fingers and stuff. But that's the only facial or head head hook out of all and those kids. She was tougher than. It was just amazing to me. I, just, I found out that women are a lot tougher at that moment when I said, uh, what do I want me to do? And she said, well, push it through and cut it off. And I go, oh, okay. okay. I would have done it to myself, but <laughs> I popped that thing through, cut the end of it, pulled it out, and she never even blinked. Really? Yeah. Tough girl. Oh, yeah. Annie Oakley type. <laughs> yes, bet. Call her. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, this is Kelly Wells in Oakley, Idaho. Yes, sir. I've got a question for Kelly. All right. I see a lot of foxes when I'm out building fence and repairing fence in the afternoons. You'll see them trotting down the creeks in the evenings, towards the evening, about the time that sage hens go to the water. I just wonder if the fishing game, I guess they probably realize they've got foxes everywhere. I've seen them up to the bike off mine. I've seen them in Boston, up Goose Creek. Yeah, we, we, they're, Carson. they're scattered from heck to breakfast, and you know that's. I guess that's the reason we have we have a, a, a three hundred and sixty five day season on them, and uh, so uh, yeah, if the more that sportsmen can get out there and trap and harvest the those, the better. Huh? Yep, it's. Uh, you know, the foxes in the valley were released here. They're non-native. The only native fox we have in Idaho is up in the mountains. And so uh, you bet. Get out there, and, and pelts are actually worth quite a bit right now. Uh, they're probably starting to slip and rub right now, but in the winter months, you can make a pretty good dime off of them. So. Kelly, thanks for your call. I appreciate it. And say hello to everybody up there in Oakley. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You know, uh, he brings up a really important fact. I've seen a lot of fox lately yeah. right here going from uh, Murtaugh like to Hanson Cross on Highway 30. There's yeah. quite a few you there see. There is. Yeah. You know, and that's one of those things. I, I, and I appreciate his call on that. And people, I guess that's the thing. We just need people to, we don't have people that can go out and do this. All right. You know, so it's you, the same issue with our wolves. You know, people are upset that we got so many wolves, but, well, you know, so we've got X amount of dollars, and so hunters need to get out and hunt. we got a quick call. i got 30 seconds. Real quick, caller, go fast. Yes, uh, I saw in the paper where they were planting fish throughout the state, and uh, there was an OP reservoir was not mentioned. It's probably one of the heaviest fish um, waters in the state. is pretty well fished out. I wonder if they're planning on putting any fish in there. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll answer them on the air. Thanks. i got about 20 seconds. Go real Yes, we on. are getting our stocking uh, going here in the next week or two. We will have new, more fish up there in Oakley. Very good. Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fishing Game. Great program. Lots of good calls. Lots of good yeah. questions. Love hearing from the folks. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate your being here and we'll plan everything for next month in April and you will bring me a Hunter's Education Workbook and, and Doug McGargle. Hey, that's good. We'll have Mormon tab.
Tabernacle Choir. Look out, here we come. Uh, thanks. I appreciate you being on the program this morning. Hey, thank you for having me. All right. Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fish and Game. We will be back tomorrow morning at 8.06. And tomorrow's Thursday. we got a whole bunch of things to take care of on a busy Thursday. Don't miss a minute of it. Tune in at 8.06. Zeb at the Ranch, and we will be here the way things were, the way things ought to be. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning.